And with that, I will pass the microphone to the mayor, Sam Licardo. Thank you very much. And thank you to each one of you for joining us for this community discussion tonight. Uh, I'm joined by uh, several colleagues here at the city of San Jose. I know Vice Mayor Chappie Jones is with us and council members Raul Perales and Magdalena Carrasco. If others have joined as well, please, by all means, let us know. Uh, I wanna thank all the folks who have worked to convene us this evening. Uh, Angel Rios, uh, Carrie Adams Happner, Kim Wallish, Michael Ogilvie, uh, and the many other city staff who work hard uh, to help us uh, engage more meaningfully with our community. And I wanna thank in particular our arts commissioners, uh, Juan Carlos Araujo, uh, who you'll hear from shortly, as well as Lynn Brown. And I really wanna thank Chandra Brooks for her willingness to facilitate tonight's discussion. Uh, and most importantly, thanks to each one of you. Uh, we know that regardless of your views about art, about issues of politics or history or race, we are here because uh, we all love our city and we care about this community and about our collective legacy. And we share an appreciation uh, for the role of public art in our communities. Uh, it enables communication across generations and through time and teaches and inspires and engages. And as the title of this tonight's event suggests, it also provokes. And the dialogue that public art provokes is not always pleasant. Uh, it may be angry, but this is the moment in our history for difficult conversations, particularly difficult conversations about race. In the last year, I've seen and heard a lot of anger, uh, much of it justifiably expressed by community members whose families have endured generations of systemic racism and white supremacy in our nation and our local institutions. And it's time for many of us who have not suffered from that oppression to see with different eyes and to hear with different ears. And lately, I, I thought a lot about how we experience public art and symbols differently as a result of our lived experiences. For example, for two decades, I know uh, since this statue will be a subject of our discussion, I, I've driven, cycled, and run past the Fallon statue probably hundreds of times. And I used to live in an apartment only a, a few blocks away. And in all that time, I probably spent no more than a few seconds looking at the statue. Uh, I know that is not the reality for many of our community members who are far more acutely aware of that statue. And regardless of what Thomas Fallon did or didn't do, and I've tried to do some research and I still learned relatively little about his, what he actually did in his life, uh, it, it's apparent that the event commemorated by that statue, the first raising the American flag on San Jose soil in 1846, has profoundly different meaning to different members of our community. Uh, for some, it's the dawn of an American era, uh, the establishment of democratic institutions uh, achieved historically without violence or loss of life here in San Jose. Uh, and for many others in our community, many members of our community, it's a symbol of oppression of an era when San Jose's Mexican residents were displaced from their homes, deprived of their property, when families of indigenous tribes in our state were slaughtered, when members of non-white case were deprived of rights, all in the name of manifest destiny. Here's the challenge that both things can be true and that we can be both proud Americans and burdened by the more shameful moments of our shared history. And so this statue, like so much public art, becomes something of a cultural and racial Rorschach test. And our interpretation is shaped, of course, by our own lived experiences. And it has forced me in my own life to think and learn a bit more about my own ancestors who actually lived in San Jose at the time the only ancestors I had living in San Jose around here were actually Mexican. Uh, my mother's maiden name is Aceves, and around the time of the Fallon planting of the flag in 1846, Ramon Aceves and his wife Rosa Flores would have just arrived from Michoacan, and he worked in the Almaden mines. And he was likely exploited by European mine workers along with many other Mexican immigrants. And at nearly the same time, that planting of that flag, another ancestor of mine, Maria Clara Ortega, then lived in the South County, lost the land that was handed down to her by her grandfather. For reasons I don't think we ever really understood, but as I've done more investigating, I've learned that many Mexican families lost their land, their homes, right around that time, without compensation. 
And I think we all understand a little better now. So since my Mexican ancestry isn't really immediately apparent, I never suffered from discrimination as so many of my neighbors have. And of course, their, diff their life experience is informed by their inherited pain, uh, the pain and dignity that has been suffered by preceding generations. And many of my neighbors saw that statue even when I didn't. And so we embark on this conversation with our very different life experiences. And it's my hope it won't be the end of a conversation, but the elevation of it. And I expect we will continue this conversation. And I wanna thank each of you for your openness to that conversation. We're very fortunate to have Chandra Brooks here to facilitate this discussion. Chandra is a longtime community activist, an author and an entrepreneur. She's a former commissioner on the Commission of the Status of Women and Girls, former vice president of San Jose NAACP and co-director of the Women's March. And she now also serves as a consultant. We're very grateful uh, that she's facilitating here today. Chandra. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm just so proud to see so many faces in the audience um, today. Um, this means that you truly care about our city um, for you to attend a meeting this evening. So thank you all for being here. I'm honored to um, facilitate this conversation and hopefully um, get us moving in the right direction. Um, so this conversation was prompted by some um, conversation and complaints that were raised over um, the past few months in regards to the Americana art piece um, in the um, Holding the Moment exhibit and um, also um, the um, also the, the statue of Thomas Fallon, okay? So this is why we're here today and we wanna have this discussion. So I am going to keep the conversation moving. All right, I wanna go over some ground rules um, and some just respect for each other as we're having a community conversation. We all care about this, these topics. So I wanna make sure that everybody is heard. Uh, we wanted to allot plenty of time for everybody to um, speak if possible. So hopefully you've already raised your hand or if you've already um, let it be known that you would like to say something, but let me go over the, our um, community agreements that's better said um, for all of us because we are a community. So um, let me go over our agreements. So this is a public forum and not a debate, right? Everyone is encouraged to participate. Uh, when you speak, please state your name clearly. Also one person speak at a time. And we want everybody to listen and respect every point, everybody's point of view. And everybody will get one minute to speak um, because we had such great participation and um, involvement in this meeting. We have a lot of people here. So we wanna make sure that everybody has a chance to say what they need to say today and we get everything on record so we can move things in the right direction. All right, so with that being said, I am not gonna hold up the conversation. I'm gonna keep it moving. Um, I would like to next introduce um, Mr. Angel Rios, city manager with the office of the city manager's office. All right, Th thank you, Chandra. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm joined here uh, with other city staff, our, uh, my colleague, uh, Deputy City Manager, Kim Wallish. Uh, Carrie Adams Hapner, our Director of Cultural Affairs, and our Public Arts Director, uh, Michael Ogilvy. Um, and uh, on behalf of our city manager, Dave Sykes, we'd like to, to, to welcome you uh, this evening, jo joining uh, the mayor and welcoming you all. And Chandra, um, uh, you know, needless to say, this past year has been filled with main challenges, right? Uh, and, as, and as if the pandemic wasn't enough, uh, we find ourselves divided as a country, even as a city, even as a community, largely along racial lines. Uh, and this division and this tension also spills into the public art domain in our city. So for example, as the mayor mentioned, there are diver divergent perspectives on the Fallon statue, the hold in the moment exhibition. Uh, this tension also calls into question the role of freedom of expression and the first amendment. And what do we do with that? And how do we apply that? And when does it apply? So how do we reconcile these tensions? Um, you know, what do we do when art provokes? Uh, so so uh, uh, we here at the city of San Jose uh, wanted to take a pause. You know, uh, we wanted, you know, recognizing that the tension that's in our community, we wanted to take a pause and, and engage our community in a dialogue, in a conversation, so we can unpack this tension 
and do something with it, do something transformative, do something productive with it. Uh, the purpose of today's forum is to discuss, listen, and seek to understand the different views and feelings in the community related to public art in our city. Uh, the views that are expressed uh, and the input that we receive here at this forum will be shared with all city departments, uh, specifically the San Jose Office of Cultural Affairs, uh, the San Jose Arts Commission, uh, as well as the entire, uh, you know, the mayor and the entire city council by way of info memo. Uh, so so the, the views and the information that we get that we received tonight will be passed on uh, by way of info memo to the mayor and council and it'll become part of the public record. Uh, so once again, we, we, we thank you. Our hope is that the views expressed today will help inform our future actions uh, so that we just continue down this road of, of re really kind of healing our, our country, healing our community and, and doing what's best for San Jose and making sure that, that it, it's truly reflective of all the various cultures that have made this uh, city uh, what it is today. So with that, let me, uh, again, thank you for being here and I'll turn it back to Chandra. Thank you, Angel. All right, next on the agenda, we have Mr. Juan Carlos Arajo. Um, he is the vice chair of the City of San Jose's Arts Commission. Thank you, Chandra. You're welcome. Uh, and thank you everybody who is here. Um, it's an amazing turnout. We hope to see uh, this kind of attendance at our arts commissioner meetings and public art committee meetings. Um, a little bit about myself. My name is Juan Carlos Araujo. I'm born and raised in San Jose. Um, I was brought up by a single mother who worked in the canneries. Um, and uh, in 2007, I was able to establish and open up my own business, uh, which is called Empire Seven Studios. Um, since uh, we lost our space and were displaced, I have then launched a annual mural festival called Pow Wow San Jose. Um, I'm personally, you know, I uh, have some talking points here and I wanted to share. So uh, personally, uh, why we uh, am involved in the uh, arts commissioners meetings uh, or as arts commissioner is because uh, just wanting to be involved in the process uh, and learning more about how to navigate process. Uh, I've served on the Arts Commission for about a year, and within that year, I was elected by other fellow commissioners as vice chair. Uh, the Arts Commissioner uh, position is a volunteer city council advisory body that provides city council with advice and recommendations on city policies and programs pertaining to the arts in San Jose. Uh, the Arts Commission is comprised of 11 members, and all are appointed from city council and the mayor, each representative, uh, each represent a specific council district. Um, I represent district three. The arts commission's areas of interest include grants and support for the arts sector, including nonprofits, artists and arts-based businesses, public art, outdoor special events, cultural facilities and promoting the public value of the arts. Uh, we meet via Zoom at 5.30 uh, p.m. On, third, on the third Monday of every month, except for months of July and December. Uh, again, I encourage you to check out what is on our agenda to attend the meetings. Rarely anybody attends, I will say that. Um, and we always want to hear from those who want to make a positive impact on culture. Um, the Arts Commission has two committees, the Executive Committee, which sets the agenda for the Commissioner meetings, and the Public Art Committee meeting chaired by Lynn Brown, who is also here with us tonight, will explain more about that. So I encourage everybody to reach out to me as well, and um, thank you for being here again. Lynn? Hello, one, one second before Lynn goes. Um, I want to make sure, Mateus, can you give instructions to everybody on here to make sure they know how to raise their hand um, to speak when, when it's public comment time? Um, we wanted to make the introduction short, so public comment will be coming up very quickly. So, Mateus, can you just give a little instruction on how people can uh, raise their hand if they don't know how? Please. Jennifer, Mateus? Me yep. I'll, I'll okay. be, we're, we were planning on doing that uh, the, once we start public comment. 
Okay. But uh, in the meantime, um, oh, it looks like it's in, there we go. If everyone can see here, there is a reactions icon at the bottom of your Zoom window. And that icon, if you click on that, you'll see a, a bunch of reactions. If you click the bottom there, it says raise hand, you'll, you're, you will have your hand raised effectively. You can use the other reactions, but they'll disappear very quickly. So uh, please just use the raise hand function. Uh, we're keeping a list right now of those who've raised their hand, just keep it up in the meantime. And then um, we'll go over the instructions again once public comment has begun. Awesome, thank you, Mateus. All right. Next on the agenda, we have uh, Ms. Lynn Brown. She is the chair of the Public Arts Committee. Ms. Brown? Are you here? <laughs> is Lynn here? Does anybody know if she's here? I saw her. Let me just scroll through the participants. She's there. I think she may be frozen. Here she is. She's on mute. OK. Lynn, unmute yourself if you can, please. Uh, looks like she's having some trouble. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe go to me Is and this then. Lynn Rogers, correct? No, Lynn Brown. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. We'll come back to Lynn. We'll come back to Lynn. Me. As she gets Lynn, um, I'll go next and then maybe what we could do is you can either call in if you can't fix your uh, your volume, okay? Her name is under Brown, just so uh, Matthias knows. Okay. All right. So next on the agenda, we have Ms. Carrie Adams Harpner. Harpner. She is the Director of the Office of Cultural Affairs. Sorry uh, to interrupt. Uh, uh -huh. I, Brown, uh, Lynn Brown should now be able to. I didn't realize she had her name that, like that, but she's now available to unmute herself. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes, but I'm waiting frantically to say I could not unmute myself. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you, Chandra. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Uh, as you can tell by now, I'm Lynn Brown. I am the current chair of the Public Art Committee. Public art members are appointed on a yearly basis by the chair of the Arts Commission. Uh, it is made up of five commissioners and three outside art experts. And together we consider the public art for the city of San Jose. Public art does reflect the culture of any and all of our communities and that's true also. We have oversight and advise the Arts Commission on matters pertaining to the city's public art programs and the public art master plan, including the selection the acquisition, the placement, and the conservation of public art in the city's collection, which is every year growing more and more. And invite all of you to please go online and take a look at it, or even better, go in person and look at our public art. Per the City Council approved public art master plan, the Public Arts Committee has the authority to approve of the design and or artworks that are proposed for city property. On a rare occasion, we also review and approve the deaccession of public art from the city's committee uh, collection. So that means art that we no longer will include in our public collection. We meet regularly on the first Tuesday of every other month at 5.30 p.m. Uh, we see more people, particularly when there is a proposal that we are to consider and, and vote upon. The regular meetings are scheduled for the months, every other month, beginning in February, April, June, August, October, and December. December agendas are posted at the San Jose Culture.org. We welcome everyone to come, not just the group and the community members that are attending because of a particular proposal. And we hope all of you in attendance here will take an active role and participate in our public art process. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn, so much. Appreciate that. Um, um, thank you also, Juan. Um, I think it's important for everybody to know and everybody understands how they can attend the Arts Commission meetings and participate in that process because it would definitely help in situations like this to get your voices heard at these meetings. I remember when I was a commissioner um, on the Commission on the Status of Women, Santa Clara County would maybe have one or two people attend these meetings. So it's very important that we all engage. Um, and of course you all are engaged because you are here, um, but the commission meetings are important as well for you to attend. So thank you, Lynn, for that. 
Um, next, again, I would like to introduce Ms. Carrie Adams Hartner. Hartner. She is the Director of the Office of Cultural Affairs. Carrie. Great, thank you, Chandra. Good evening, everybody. My name is Carrie Adams Hapner, and I'm the director of the Office of Cultural Affairs, which manages the San Jose Public Art Program. And I really wanna thank you all for joining us. Just the number of people here, I think is 148 um, in tonight's event, really underscores the power and the significance of public art. And our public art program really strives to inspire our community through artworks and exhibitions developed with artists, project stakeholders, and the community. There are 312 permanent public artworks in the city's collection, of which the majority have been embraced by the community in large part because of the public art process outlined in our 2007 public art master plan. So um, just to restate, please check out our public art collection. You can find it at sanjoseculture.org or better yet in person. So tonight, you know what, we'll, we'll be be focusing on the public art process, but obviously uh, a small number of works of art in our collection that have been the subjects of recent animated discourse, the Fallon statue and Americana. And so for context, I'm gonna provide some brief statements about the background of these two pieces as well as the public art process itself. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna just show some images and we're gonna go from here. So I know everybody's familiar with this work. It's the, the Fallon statue. It was commissioned by the San Jose Redevelopment Agency in 1988 with funds generated from the private development of the Fairmont Hotel, as well as the Paseo housing developments. Now, as the mayor outlined, the art aims to come out commemorate Thomas Fallon's raising of the US flag in San Jose in 1846 during the Mexican-American War. When California was still part of Mexico, Fallon later became the seventh mayor of San Jose. While the art was selected by a committee and approved by the Redevelopment Agency Board, it was perceived by some as a less rigorous public art process than the city has had in place. So as the mayor said, it became a controversy in which some members of our community viewed it as a symbol of racial subjugation rather than a unifying symbol of the founding of San Jose. And because of this, in 1990, the city formed the Historic Art Advisory Committee composed of a diverse panel of residents, and that committee recommended the city acknowledge other aspects of its heritage and the stories of San Jose, including agriculture, Ohlone culture, and Mexican heritage. And located at prominent downtown sites, these works were commissioned. So I'm going to share with you the, the next work. Oh, I got to move my things around. Okay. Okay, shoot, my slides aren't forwarding. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Okay, great. So this is the work, uh, this is called um, Remembering Agriculture. This is cited at Santa Clara in 87. This is the founding of the Pueblo, a Parque de los Pueblos in Sofa. It's by Islo Streetscapers. Man on Fire, which is by Kim Yasuda, and this is a tribute to Dr. Ernesto Galarza on Paseo de San Antonio. Plume Serpent, also known as Quetzalcoatl at Plaza de Cesar Chavez. And the Weaver's Gifts at Confluence Point. And then after being in storage through 2002, until all the other sculptures were complete, the Fallon statue was installed. Now the other work of art that's the subject of tonight's meeting is Americana. And this artwork is one of 96 works selected as part of a collective body of work by local artists called Holding the Moment. San Jose artists were invited by the public art program to submit artworks reflecting and commenting on the pandemic crisis and this challenging time. And a six person panel selected 96 works uh, which were then approved by the Public Art Committee. 
So these were reproduced in a poster size for temporary display at the airport. All the artists were paid $2,500 per work and the works were to be on display for 30 days and also promoted on our social media and listed on the OCA's um, website. So this work, um, Americana by Eric Bui, was part of the first exhibition group that uh, was opened on November 1st and was to be up on display through December 5th when the next group of artworks would be rotated in. However, the city heard concerns from its employees at the airport, the police officers association and members of the public that Americana exhibited in a public facility could be seen to encourage violence against police. The evening of December 2nd, city manager Dave Sykes directed to deinstall the exhibition three days early on December 2nd, having met the commitment to the artist for a one month exhibition. The next rounds of exhibitions have since been installed. So Dave Sykes, uh, our city manager, he did write an information memo to the mayor and the council to outline these issues. And he it's available on our city website. And he wrote that the inclusion of the artwork in the exhibition is not a commentary on how the city of San Jose values its police officers and serving and protecting our residents. And that concerns involving violence against police must be taken very seriously. He also included the artist statement by Eric Bui that where the artist, Eric clearly expressed his intent that the creation of the work was not to encourage or promote violence, but rather to document a time of distress in our nation. So Americana remains and the other works in the first round of exhibition remain online in our digital collection. Also um, in his uh, info memo, Dave Sykes emphasized that reconsideration of any of the city's approved artworks would need to go through the Public Art Committee of the Arts Commission. So I really wanna thank and acknowledge Eric Wee for his empathy and interest in promoting uh, more public discourse and understanding so that all perspectives can be shared. And, and I wanna uh, kind of end on Americana with this quote from Eric. And he said in a follow-up explanation, as he learned that his work had generated concerns uh, about promoting police violence, uh, he's, this is just an excerpt. He said, I feel that having a dialogue about this is the correct approach. I want to be sensitive to the reactions of these people and to acknowledge and understand why they responded the way they did. I encourage everyone to be sensitive and receptive to those who may not share your viewpoints. So I want to thank Eric for you're just promoting public discourse, which is really our goal for this evening. So I'm going to talk briefly about our public art program and its process. Um, as we mentioned, we have a 2007 public art master plan, which really improved our process for decision making as well as our community involvement in public art. So the city of San Jose has a 1% for art ordinance, which we set aside 1% of eligible capital improvement project costs for public art. Now these are just city uh, capital improvements. Um, and there are restrictions to the funding. So for example, 1% uh, of airport capital projects must be spent on art at the airport. And the same is true of say parks or libraries. And then once a project budget is approved, um, the OCA and the public art program puts out a call to artists artists then apply and we compile applications for a community panel to review. The panels comprise of neighborhood residents, um, arts professionals, city staff and stakeholders. And then the city contracts with the artists for design, the fabrication and the installation. And then the community outreach begins, which is really, really important to us. We work, we do uh, up to three, what we call visioning meetings uh, with the community. They are multilingual and open to the general public. We broadcast this through social media, email, newsletters and other outlets. And these meetings help the artists meet the community 
and get input from them, essentially laying the seeds of inspiration. The artist then goes back to his or her studio and creates a concept design. And that concept design, once completed, is presented to the community or stakeholders for feedback. Sometimes this helps enhance the concept. And then once the concept goes to the public art committee, they review it and approve it. And once it's approved, there's a set of construction documents that get developed, reviewed and approved by licensed engineers and the city. And then the artist next fabricates and installs the art, which then gets dedicated. But after it's dedicated, it is a responsibility to, of the city to make sure it's well maintained. And as we have a, a process for um, ex, you know, acquiring work, there's also a process and a policy for deaccessioning work. So I'm gonna speak to that briefly. Um, well, you know, we, the public art committee, as Lynn Brown mentioned, um, is sort of, it is the main body that reviews any proposal for deaccession or the permanent re removal of any work from our collection. And that takes the same careful review as acquisition, as I mentioned. So this is a public procedure that includes criteria, legal opinion, and a review panel with community representatives. And ultimately, the public art committee forwards a recommendation to the Arts Commission, which then forwards a recommendation to the full city council. And I should just say, you know, this happens very rarely, but we do have a process in place. And I want to acknowledge uh, the director of public art who's with us tonight, uh, Michael Ogilvy, who leads the program and is available for any additional follow up. And I just want to end on this note. Um, when it comes to art, you know, all reactions and perspectives that come from viewing and artwork are valid. And these two works that we're talking about tonight are just examples of how we find meaning or interpret art based on our own life experiences and perspectives. Art can also help us to understand, empathize, learn, and possibly even change the way we view the world and interact with others. So thank you for your time. And I'm gonna turn it back to you, Chandra. Thank you. All right, thank you, Carrie. All righty. Okay, so now is the time for public comment. All right, so um, we have many hands raised. So if you have not raised your hand and you want to speak, please, um, if you, if you, hopefully you understood the instructions on how to raise your hand, so you may be able to um, voice your opinion. So let me move this on to Mateus. Can you go ahead and guide me on who is first on the list for public comment? Yeah, so first I want to note that there was um, sort of a Zoom glitch where a lot of uh, everyone's hands were put down. If you raised your hands initially, we did take a note of that. So we've got a list of about 20 people currently who um, raised their hand uh, in the initial portion. So if you did not get to raise your hand at that time, please uh, raise it again. In order to raise your hand, um, there are a few ways to do it. The primary way for those of you who have updated your app would be on the bottom of the uh, window of your Zoom uh, window, you'll see an option says reactions. You'll click that and then raise hand. Some of you may only have the option uh, just immediately adjacent to the reactions button or in place of the reactions button. It will be a, a hand. And then some of you may find it um, in the participants panel. So if you click on participants here on the bottom of the window, and then the um, subsequent window that pops up, it should be there on the bottom. Um, and uh, so sorry for the confusion. There's a lot of different versions of Zoom out there. So um, a lot of different ways to raise your hand these days. That being said, um, we are now gonna bring, begin the public comment phase. So if you wanna make a comment, you raise your hand. Um, additionally, um, call-in users can raise their hand by typing star nine. And then when the option comes for them to speak, um, we'll call out the last four digits of their phone number, and then they'll have to unmute themselves by clicking, uh, by typing star six. Again, star nine for phone users, that is call-in users uh, to raise your hand. Uh, again, we're keeping track of them all, so please be patient. Um, there's a lot of you here today, but we should be able to get to everyone. Um, I'm also gonna ask that everyone read and respect the community agreements we have posted here, which I'm actually gonna read out loud for the benefit of, um, members of the public who are um, being interpreted for currently. So um, first, raise your hand to speak. 
English comments will receive one minute time. Non-English comments, because of the nature of consecutive interpretation, will be getting two minutes per comment. Uh, you will be muted while you aren't speaking. You'll be asked to unmute when you are uh, when it's your turn. Please don't use any profanity and don't attempt to interrupt other speakers. Um, we will have the ability to mute you or turn off your video uh, if uh, if what what we are seeing or hearing is inappropriate, just so that you are forewarned. Um, that being said, we're going to start off here. Um, the first we have on our list is Lydia Donis, and I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, Lydia, can you unmute? Thank you. I'm unmuted. Thank you. You said my name correctly. Hello, everyone. My name is Lydia Donis. I am a resident of downtown San Jose. I am also the founding member of Movimiento Cosmico, Indigenous Dance and Culture. Um, there is a difference between art starting conversations and race and statues that uphold white supremacy. The Fallon statue is an equivalent of con a Confederate statue of the South. White privilege calls this public art. My lived experience as an indigenous mother of brown and young brown young men is a painful reminder of the violence against black and brown men and women to uphold and maintain white supremacy, dating back to the stealing of indigenous land and to this summer with George Floyd's death. Ideally, I'd like for the statue, for the Fallon statue to be taken down. And if the statue stays, then signage be added to acknowledge the fact that, that not removing this statue um, upholds and causes harms to black and brown people. I also feel that taking down, the taking down of holding the moment without a formal <laughs> process is, is an example of white supremacy. Oh, that's a loud. Apologize for that, Siren. I'm gonna. Make, I didn't realize that was gonna go off. I'll make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, we appreciate your comments. We're gonna keep the comments to one minute. If if at the end of this period um, there are still um, more people who would like to say additional comments, and we have uh, time, uh, we will invite you to raise your hands again. So I'm sorry for interrupting you, mid-speech, and that siren there. Um, it won't happen again. Or, um, I, is she still unmuted? No, she was, okay. we, we, we set the muter okay. mute okay. as well. Right. Uh, again, apologies for interruption, but we will uh, invite you again if there's more time. We just want to be making sure that everyone gets an opportunity. Thank you for your comment. We appreciate it. Okay, next. Okay, so next we have Paul Soto. Paul, whenever you, uh, whenever you get the invite, please unmute yourself and I'll start the timer when you're ready. Hi, Paul. Paul, uh, hey, Paul, can you hear me? It, it sounds like it's sort of breaking up. Uh, uh, it looks like you're having some technical difficulties. Can you hear me clearly, Paul? Can you hear me? Okay. Paul, we'll come back to you, okay? Because... Okay. We'll keep your name on the list, Paul, and, and, and come back in a little and try you again. It, it was impossible to hear you there. Um, so sorry about that, but we will make sure you get a chance uh, in a little bit. Perhaps something will fix itself in your internet. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, next comment we have is Andrew Crockett. You'll be invited to unmute yourself. Hello, I'm Andrew Crockett. I'm a member of San Jose Lodge number 10 of the Free and Accepted Masons. And I'm here tonight because Thomas Fallon was one of the early members of my Masonic Lodge back in the 1850s. And I look at the statue and when it was commissioned at a time when the Hispanic people of San Jose were coming into their own in civic engagement as a way of dividing our community. This is something that feeds into the narrative of conquest, which is nothing that we should have here in San Jose. What I'd love to see is my Masonic brother, Thomas Fallon, taken to the San Jose Historic Park, where he could be properly contextualized as a testimony to our early history and not be an obstacle to the future that we have together as San Joseans. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crockett. Appreciate your comment. All right, next. Okay, so next we have Jorge. Uh, that's the only name we have on here. So Jorge, if you could unmute yourself and begin.
Jorge, are you there? Anybody see him on the screen at all? Okay. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Jorge, we'll keep you on the list and come back to you. Sorry about that, Jorge. Um, next, we have Gina Gates. Gina, whenever you get the message, please unmute yourself and begin. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Gina Gates. I'm a longtime resident of, of San Jose. I love San Jose. I was born here. I will die here. And um, if you look at my picture, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see it. Um, this is the last time when um, our people, our gente, our brown folks, we stood up in San Jose and we marched. And we did that because we are unified and we're unified behind this issue as well. We need to have art that represents us, that encourages us, that lifts us. What I'm hoping to convey to you is that there have been a lot of rungs that people have used in their family to help them achieve and, and rise to where they are today. With our hint that those rungs have been taken away and stolen. This is what Fallon statue stands for us. I am asking you to remove this statue and please honor us, respect us, and let us have our seat at the table. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Appreciate your comment. All righty. You, uh, and again, I'm going to apologize for that siren. That was uh, YouTube default. Um, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. <laughs> the first time there. Okay, so next we have Jaime Rios. If you could uh, mute yourself when you receive the uh, ask. Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, 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 everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here and have a voice in, in this important discussion. Um, and I just want to say, you know, me being uh, born in Mexico, coming here, being raised by immigrants, having Amer uh, Mexican American kids, wife Mexican American, um, it, and seeing how everything's a division, I think it's very important that we should uh, start new and um, in the sense of everybody, you know, being together and having uh, nothing where, you know, when I looked this man up, I saw that, you know, his number one points were conquering, you know, uh, um, indigenous people and people that were in this land. And you see a lot of division. So I feel if we can start new, you know, with uh, less division, more, you know, honest opinion from everyone, it would be really nice and really good for the future and for my kids to see and my wife. And it's very important because um, to have a voice um, it's, it's so important, you know. Sorry. Yes, Jaime, thank you so much. Appreciate your comment. Uh, so next we have Moxie March. Uh, so we're going to ask you to unmute. And then next, um, there's a user with the username Fallon was a colonizer. So that will be um, after Moxie. Moxie, whenever you're ready, if you could unmute. Um, good evening. My name is Moxie. Um, while I understand that this statue can be seen as a history lesson, everything we can learn from a piece of stone is already well documented in California's Eurocentric white history textbooks. While I can't speak to racism as a white woman, I can hear how black people and people of color have been opposed to this statue. Of course, not everyone feels that way, but everyone who does still deserves to feel safe and welcomed in their homes and communities. No matter what action is shown in this statue, you cannot separate the action this person's other actions from them. Acting as though commemorating one good action of this colonizer does nothing better for education. This man's good deeds are already well documented and this statue does nothing for San Jose but remind marginalized communities of their generational trauma and oppression. Frankly, it's disrespectful to remove hypothetical art of a cop car being smashed, but not the statue of a man who aided in genocide and trauma of real living people here. Thank you so much. All righty, next. So next we have the user named Fallon was a colonizer, after which we will have the user Louis Rocha. Apologies for mispronouncing your last name. Yes, thank you. Yes, my name is Thomas Fallon was a colonizer. And I think it's really important to recognize that this statue represents the ongoing illegal occupation of 
the territory that's now being called San Jose, but is actually Ohlone Muwekma land. And this is not this is not a past, right? Colonization is not something that's happened in the past that's been resolved. It's ongoing and it's happening right now. So let's not deceive or pretend to ourselves that colonization isn't an ongoing occupation of the so-called territory of San Jose. Mayor Sam Licardo made the comment when he originally proposed this forum that, you know, the statue's fate won't be decided uh, by the whim of random vandals. And let me just say to Mayor Sam Licardo, as one of the people being accused of vandalizing that statue, that there is no whim about it. There are many statues in San Jose and that statue has been targeted by people for a reason because it's a symbol of colonization. Thank you so much for your comment. Appreciate it. All right, next, um, just FYI, if we have any questions, we will do questions after public comment. So next we have Louis Rocha and after which we're gonna go back to Jorge who uh, messaged me and let me know that he's fixed his, uh, or they, are, they fixed their um, microphone. So uh, Louis, whenever you are ready, you can begin. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, good evening. Tonight I'm speaking on behalf of my youngest children who are ninth generation Californios, descendants of Pio Pico and the Flores family. And I strongly oppose that statue. It's an insult to our family's history and also to all the Mexicano, the Chicano population here. It's a statue that reflects white supremacy. It glorifies war. And it's from the old mindset of the old world. San Jose, if it's to be progressive, should have art that celebrates and uplifts all people and not at the expense of others. So si se puede, I believe in that and it should be reflective in our art. So ya basta, enough is enough. Move it, take it down, melt it down, make something useful out of it, but it does need to go. It's an insult and especially in these times, there's no one that should be ignorant about this issue. Thank you, Mr. Rocha. Appreciate your comment. Okay, so next we're going to go back to Jorge. Uh, if you can unmute yourself. Thank you so much. I hope everybody can listen to me. Good evening. Thank you for the second chance. Henri Trudeau mentioned uh, in 1849 in his civil disobedience book uh, pamphlet essay that government are using sometimes power on their behalf. And uh, he was opposing, as you know, the slavery and, of course, the Mexican-American War. Fallon statue is exactly the same days today, and it's exactly the same position on the Americana painting. Both of them are in both sides of the spectrum. But Fallon, with all due respect for the people that support him, he was an intruder. He was someone like a terrorist because this part of the world belonged to Mexico back then. So that kind of a statue symbols an imperialism and an invasion of a country in a different, uh, to a different country, uh, taking advantage of all of it. I please urge you to remove it and put it somewhere else and keep the Americana one if you want to play and keep Fallon's one. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jorge. Okay, so next we're going to go back to Paul Soto, who has logged back in and hopefully uh, addressed some of the audio issues. After Paul, um, we're going to go to a call-in user with the phone number ending in 35140. Okay, Paul, if you could unmute yourself and begin. Uh, good, good evening. First of all, I'd like to thank you for your opening, uh, Mayor Licardo. I appreciate appreciate the uh, sensitivity to the issue that you demonstrated, so I appreciate that. I'm quoting now from Governor Peter Burnett's inaugural address, January 7th, 1851, and I quote, that a war of extermination will continue to be waged between the races until the Indian race becomes extinct must be expected. While we cannot anticipate this result, but with painful regret, the inevitable destiny of the race is beyond the power or wisdom of man to avert. This is what we're talking about. If we're gonna remove Peter Burnett's name from that school because of, he, because of who he represented, then we must by extension remove Fallon's statue because there is no Peter Burnett without Fallon. Fallon is who gave the power to Burnett to demonstrate this savage bestial way by which to decimate the native populations. It's disgusting. We need to get that statue removed. 
Thank you, Mr. Soto. Appreciate your comments. Okay, so now we are going to go to user uh, phone calling user. It would be number ending in 35140. Um, you're going to have to unmute. Oh, looks like you figured it out. So we're ready when you are. Yeah, this thing doesn't always work so well. Now, you know, since when do the losers of a war make the rules? You know, Fallon, they won the war, created the California Republic, which would have been nice if it would have stayed that way. It didn't. But uh, no, I don't, I don't think it should be removed. I think the people who desecrate statues should be put in jail, like the woman who the woman who called in earlier. But uh, no, this is part of the history. You're erasing history. You're not going to have any history at all when you have ugly art that you're going to reinstall. You know, some cement block with rusted metal or something. I mean, if anything, the Keys and Codal statue should go. I mean, it looks like a big POS. And, uh, you know, the Aztecs weren't nice people. They, you know, they would burn people alive. The Nazis actually got their idea of burning people alive from the Aztecs. 2,000 people at a time, they incinerate in those pyramids they built in Mexico. I mean, the Aztecs were so terrible. That's Why do you think uh, this? So next. Right. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Mateus. Um, next comment. Next comment will be from Ramiro Torres, followed by Jean Libby. So Ramiro, you will get the invitation to unmute yourself. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I just need to tell you what it means to me. Um, I'm an immigrant from Mexico. I came when I was 15. And uh, now I'm an American and uh, no question about it. I have family in Mexico. When I go back there, I see my mom, I see my sister, but um, I feel more connected to the US now. My point of view is uh, a little more subtle. Um, I do see the Fallon statue as something that um, maybe should be relooked at and maybe placed in another location, uh, a museum or somewhere else. Because to me, it doesn't mean the race of the American flag. It means more the lowering of the Mexican flag. Um, again, you know, I'm a proud American, and uh, but that's just what it means to me. And um, we need more art in San Jose. I think uh, this is a good forum and it's uh, good to say that. Hopefully we get more art and that includes everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Torres. All right, next in line. Next we've got Jean Libby, after which we'll have, and I uh, may be mispronouncing this, uh, Sit Lalmina. I apologize for mispronouncing that. Um, and so Jean, whenever you're ready, you can begin. Yes, thank you. Thank you, I have, I have unmuted, but I don't think you can see me. Uh, Is that correct? We can see you. We can oh, see and hear right. you, but we're ready when you okay. are. I am, I, am a, I, I am a retired history instructor from San Jose City College and De Anza College. And uh, I'm wanting to make comments about Thomas Fallon in that he was never an American. He was a resident of Mexico for many years and uh, just wanted to set the re record straight on that. The picture that you see behind me is the City Hall of San Jose in 1855. In 1860, Thomas Fallon was uh, enabled an Episcopal congregation to have services at that City Hall it is now Trinity uh, Episcopal Cathedral on North 2nd Street, the, uh, the oldest uh, church building of continuous worship in San Jose. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Libby. Appreciate your comment. Thank you. Next. Next, we've got uh, uh, Sitla Almina, I believe, followed by Yolanda Guerra. Yeah, my name is Sitla Almina, and I'm the president of the Centro Atzlan Chico Mostoc here in San Jose, and also work with the Barrio Defense Committee that has been doing uh, work around injustices in the Mexican community. And first of all, I want to say that that, that, uh, that uh, statue must be taken down immediately. It should have been taken down a long time ago because it represents injustice, colonialism, genocide against my people. 
And so we cannot allow to have these uh, statues. They can, they can get rid of all the statues, as far as I'm concerned, that, that represent injustice and genocide, okay? We don't need them. We need, uh, we need uh, representation, uh, positive representation for our young people so that they can be proud of who they are, okay? Not these colonial statutes that are ideological struggle that, that attacks our people and tells us that we are, uh, you know, nothing for them. Thank you so much. We appreciate your comment. So next we've got Yolanda followed by Jose Villarreal. Hi, um, I, my name is Yolanda and I am a teacher in San Jose. I teach at the oldest, second oldest school in California, which is San Jose High, which I'm very proud of. Um, I, I live in the neighborhood. I drive by it every day and I find it so offensive and even more so offensive that our mayor has created this ramp and with lights to highlight it, even after, even after the protests that was mentioned by Gina Gates. And, um, and I look at it and we talk about displacement. Dipl displacement was mentioned here. I see it every day as a displacement, a continuous displacement in this community, displacement of our people, people who can't afford to live here, people who can't afford to purchase homes. And um, we're not gonna leave, we're gonna stay here. And each time I see that, that's what I see. Again, it's another example of colonization. It needs to be removed, it needs to be replaced, put somewhere else. And I would like to see a, a Sofia Mendoza statue, Cesar Chavez, Dolores Huerta, anyone but that man. It needs to be removed. Thank you, Ms. Garrett, appreciate your comment. So next we've got Jose Villarreal, followed by Brad Urso. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you can yes, hear me. Yes, we can. Uh, my name is Jose Villarreal and I represent Change Santa Clara County. Uh, I was born and raised in San Jose. And I just wanna say that it's been really dis I've been really disappointed with the San Jose leadership. Uh, I'm not a college educated man, but even I know that the history of San Jose has a dark past. Um, the lack of action from the leaders in San Jose uh, just makes me realize that you are more aligned with people for like the earlier caller than people like us. Um, you, you say you want to do good, you say you want to change, but yet the lack of action uh, shows me otherwise. Uh, we need to take this statue down now. Um, you, you talk about the radicals in this city. Uh, these radicals are created from the, the lack of action from the leaders. So please do something. Please make a change and take this statue down. Thank you, Mr. Valreal. Next comment. Next, we have Brad Urso, followed by, uh, this is the order I see the name here, Trujillo Miguel Vasquez. So Brad, whenever you're ready. Um, you know, we kind of see the way that this issue is being framed. Um, uh, a moral equivalence is being drawn between the statue and the painting in the airport. And, you know, we really just reject that framing and we frankly find it quite disgusting um, you know, we have a statue in San Jose, you know, a statue of a historical figure is not really a piece of art to interpret, right? It's a celebration of that person. And, you know, what is, what did that person, what were that person's actions, right? Because we're celebrating the totality of them, right? It's lynching of indigenous peoples and Mexican peoples. It's ethnic cleansing, it's colonialism, it's, you know, the theft of land, it's, you know, a celebration of white supremacy. So, you know, the statue should be removed, you know, power to the, you know, the protesters that attacked it. It's a symbol of white supremacy. That's a righteous and just things to do. Um, the charges against them should be dropped. Uh, it was the right thing for them to do. Thank you, Mr. Arso. Appreciate your comment. So next again, what I see this name here is Trujillo Miguel Vasquez, followed by Brian P. Yes, this is Trujillo Miguel Vasquez. Uh, I'm from Mesa San Jose, uh, working with Grupo Solidaridad. I am a poet, music creator, uh, artist, and I believe that uh, following statues should be removed. It is. Uh, a piece of art that doesn't bring us together as a San Joseans that we are. 
and for the good of our community, we should look for art that brings us together and 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 put us as a family, as as a family that we really are, and and not something that remind us the pain of our past. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your comment. Next, we've got Brian P. followed by Paige D. Hello, uh, my name is Brian. I believe that the Thomas Fallon statue should be uh, removed, uh, torn down, broken to pieces, and then melted down into something useful. It is a symbol of white supremacy and colonialism, and it really has no place in San Jose. Why it kind of got brought up was as a kind of imagined reality to celebrate uh, white supremacy. So it should be torn down. Thanks. Thank you so much, Brian. Next comment. Next, we've got Paige D followed by Vivian Day. Apologies if I mispronounced the last name. Uh, Brian, uh, sorry, Paige, whenever you're ready. Hi, yeah, I'd just like to say, I think it's pretty clear at this point to San Jose City Council that this statue really needs to go and that it really is a symbol of white supremacy, colonialism, and straight up genocide. Um, I do not think that this should be here. I think it would be awesome if it could be melted down and recreated by something, you know, local artists, get a group of local artists together and really display an image of camaraderie and just a really good future. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I just, the, the last point I wanna make is the painting that was put up at the airport. It has a red background that is not red splattered blood on the window. If anything, that's cracked windows. And if it is blood, that's not the blood of the police officers. That's the blood of the people that they abuse and sometimes murder. I yield my time. Thank you so much, Paige. Appreciate your comment. And next, we'll have a comment from Vivian, followed by, I see here, G. Banks. Uh, Vivian, whenever you're ready. Vivian, are you there? One moment, Zoom is malfunctioning. Zoom is malfunctioning, Jennifer? I'm sorry, didn't hear you. Correct. I'm trying to mute her, but Zoom is uh, being finicky. Oh, okay, okay. I'll use this time to say, uh, this is a lot of people for a Zoom meeting as opposed to a webinar. So I, we think that's why there are some issues with the video here. Some of you may be experiencing a rapid shifting of the videos, which is kind of disorienting. If you switch your view to the um, speaker view, it, it will help eliminate that. You will only be able to see pretty much one person at a time, but it might help uh, with the other issue. Thank you. Yes, can you try unmuting her? It won't work on my end. Yep. Hi, can people hear me now? Yes. Okay. Hi. Okay. Um, uh, I would just like to echo a lot of the comments that other people have made in saying that the Fallon statue is a symbol of racism and colonialism and the ongoing legacy of that in uh, America. And I think that the most respectful thing to do um, to honor the uh, Black and Indigenous communities who have been affected by the violence of Fallon and people like him is to take the statue down. Um, and replace it with something that uplifts those communities. A lot of people have uh, suggested, you know, many figures who would be worthy of a statue in San Jose, like uh, Cesar Chavez or Dolores uh, Huerta. Um, and, you know, personally, I agree. And as a San Jose resident, um, I think that this would be a really uh, good place to start in healing our relationship um, with marginalized communities who the city has repeatedly failed. Uh, thank you, and I yield the rest of my time. Mateus, can I mention something just um, to help us smooth out the technical difficulties it might help is if you don't um, have to be on camera, it might help with, I think, the bandwidth if you don't have to be on camera to take down your uh, video and it might help with that. And would it help for all of us to take our video down? I know Matthias made a suggestion. Yeah, if you're not speaking, that might be helpful uh, for the, right. yeah, for the Zoom. Thank you, Mayor. All right, next. 
speaker, Matthias. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, next, we will have Naya Sasano. Actually, Gina, sorry, or G Banks, excuse okay. me. I got okay. them unmuted. Yeah, no problem, sorry. Okay, so uh, G Banks is the name I see here. You're uh, up next, uh, followed by Naya Sasano. Hi. Hi, we hear you. Gabriela Banks, a San Jose native and first generation college graduate, formerly from Gardner neighborhood. Sam, I appreciate your family story because it speaks to a personal experience I was unaware of, and that's the point. We live in a time where assuming we know about someone's life is dangerous. It's been dangerous for minorities, which I am part of as a Mexican American woman, but also for our Caucasian counterparts who like us have their own personal experiences we are not privy to. Dialogue has never been so important. So I thank you all for tonight. As it relates to our city, I am supportive of public art that reflects our changing San Jose society, our community in its entirety, including Latinos, the Vietnamese community, the African American community, our Caucasian counterparts, people with disabilities, our LGBT community, everyone. And I think together, juntos, si se puede. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Banks. Appreciate your comment. Okay, uh, next we have Naya Sasano, followed by Lori Valdez. Naya, whenever you're ready. Hi, my name is Naya and I am a high schooler in so-called San Jose and I am for the removal of the Fallon statue. A lot of the argument for the statue seems to lie in the idea that the statue represents pride for a city, but if your pride for the community is so fragile that it is dependent on a slab of bronze that bluntly represents mass trauma, genocide, exploitation, and the colonization of so many of our community members' ancestors, what does that say about your relationship with our community? This isn't a discussion about city art and logistics. It's a clear distinction in between or on whether we as a collective decide to respect and listen to the groups we've been speaking over and, and ignoring for so long, or if we decide to respect and listen to them. We do not want the Thomas Fallon statue in our community. And I'm sorry, but your passive comfort is not more important than the dignity and respect for all of our community members. Thank you so much. Appreciate your comment. Next comment. Next, we have Lori Valdez, followed by Roma Dawson. Hi, my name is Lori Valdez, and I was born and raised here from a family of 18. I have nine brothers and eight sisters. And um, that fallen statue needs to be removed. My dad used to get so upset about yeah, that so statue. And um, I never knew why my brothers explained it to me, but it has to go down because like I said, this was, this is all Mexico, California, San Jose, this was all Mexico that was stolen. So we need to, you know, acknowledge the Latino community. We, we are always silent. And as far as the art at the airport, that is not showing um, that it's a, like something against police. It's the fact that the Latino community is being attacked by a pandemic, two pandemics, the COVID-19, which we're getting hit the hardest, and police brutality. And that's a sign of distress. When are people going to listen to our gente from our community? When are we going to be visible and have our say at the table? Stop making us invisible and letting us have a voice at the table and start learning to listen because this was our land. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. Appreciate that. Um, next comment. The next comment is will be from Roma Dawson followed by Sydney G. Apologies for mispronouncing the last name. Thank you. I just finished uh, two terms on the Arts Commission, uh, including two years serving as chair of the Public Art Committee. I care very much about the public art process, that it be fair, transparent, and most of all, consistent over time. Now, Fallon was not installed uh, prior uh, there was no public art process in place when Fallon was installed, but there was a process called the Historic Arts Advisory Committee and a very dear friend of mine that we lost recently, uh, died last year, Charlotte Powers served on that committee. And there were people that literally uh, spent over a year in anguish, including uh, then Vice Mayor Blanc Alvarado, who was liaison to the Arts Commission. So uh, times change 
uh, and that's okay. In fact, it's good. And the city should be responsive to what the current citizens want. I just ask that there be a similar process for uh, whatever happens to Fallon to decide its fate uh, and that it, again, be consistent. And- uh, Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank Dr. you. Appreciate your comment. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, please begin. Yes, we can hear you. We already have enough, more than enough monuments and reminders of colonizers and white supremacists. While the violence that he committed and represents is undoubtedly part of the bloodstained history of this land, having him as an actual city sanctioned statue sends a visible message, no matter what the intent was, that the city condones this violence and is portraying him as a hero to be honored. The decisions of which people to feature in our public spaces should be made deliberately and represent the kind of city we actually hope to have. Many of the people of color who have worked hard to organize their communities here towards justice so that we can all thrive has, have been conspicuously absent. Removing the Fallon statue may just be one symbolic piece in a much broader pervasive problems of racialized violence in many forms. And many of those might have more direct impact on people's material conditions, but at least this is one tangible and relatively easy step, even while we must continue the much harder fight. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Next comment. So next we have Veronica Amador, followed by Christopher Escher. Veronica, whenever you're ready. Great, thank you everyone. My name is Veronica and I'm an ed educator here in San Jose. And I want to, first of all, I want to reframe everyone from saying that Felon founded San Jose, California. San Jose belonged to the Moica Ohlone tribe and he found nothing. Instead, upholded genocide of many people. Um, in our schools and even and many of our local schools are passing ethnic studies. Um, and that will allow students to understand the history of different um, tribes, different uh, of the land that we live on, right? And I want to make sure that we respond to our children, students, and future constituents about how we have left this statue to represent the genocide and oppressive systems. And not only that, I want to thank everyone that is here um, to advocate towards how this statue represents oppressive systems and upholds white supremacy. I also want to remind everyone that currently Eastside San Jose has a form-based zoning which allows developers to get projects the green light was only a vote from the planning commission compared to the rest of San Jose developers. Uh, the rest of San Jose developers. Thank you so much, Ms. Amador. Appreciate your comment. Uh, and we next have Christopher Escher. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear Fant you. Fantastic. Thanks for putting this on. I'm the editor of Opportunity Now website in San Jose. Public art is not the same as private art because it's funded by all of us. So this is really not a First Amendment issue. It's really an issue about the responsibilities of the curators of public art. And I would like to suggest that public art has a higher responsibility than private art to be fair and sensitive and inclusive and not be tone deaf. So as a result, I suggest that by inviting art that is explicitly or even implicitly political should just be avoided by the public art curators. There are universes of topics for artists that do not invite charges of racism and oppression and violence. So my recommendation is get rid of all the controversial stuff. Get rid of the Fallon statue because it can be seen as white triumphalism. Get rid of Americana because it can be seen as inciting violence against the police. And get rid of the vote um, art, which is also in the Holding the Moment show because it calls into question, just like the rioters of January 6th, the legitimacy of elections. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Escher, for your comment. Next comment. Uh, next, we've got Brody, followed by Molly. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, I want to start off by saying that uh, Carrie Adams Herpner mentioned it was uh, that there was a celebration of Ohlone and Native culture. Um, but when you look at what Thomas Fallon did, which was literally advocate for the genocide and rape of indigenous Mexican people, that's quite the opposite. Um, as the Freemason said in the second comment, uh, 
like th- this this art divides people so why not just remove it no one's gonna miss it it's not a person it will not be missed um if you're in regards to uh advocating against police uh violence against police why not advocate f- against uh violence that police perpetrate on uh citizens example marissa and paella uh two people that were assaulted by police for complying um this year and an endorsement of this statue is an endorsement of genocide and rape on the mexican and indigenous people and we don't need people like mateus the one person who spoke out against indigenous people thank you so much brody just to clarify, I, I didn't leave a public comment. I'm just facilitating the meeting. Uh, next, we have Molly McLeod, followed by Kiana Simmons from Hero Tent. Hello, this is Molly McLeod. And um, learning from our history um, is extremely important. One of the first things that I did as part of the Government Alliance on Race and Equity with the city of San Jose was to read Dr. Stephen Pitty's book, The Devil in Silicon Valley, Northern California, Race and Mexican Americans which talks um, extensively about, and it concludes interviews with uh, San Jose residents, but the, the history of vigilantism and um, systemic racism in policing um, systems and criminalizing systems. So when we contrast the two, the, the uh, Fallon statue in um, 1988, why look back? Who are the heroes? I mean, art is so representative. We, we, um, there's a public need to have representation and what kind really matters. And so when we're looking at redevelopment monies going towards this, where is the type of work that is done to bring communities together to further learn our history and to really acknowledge the harms that have been done? That has to happen before healing. Thank you, Ms. McLeod. Appreciate your comment. Next comment. Next, we have Kiana Simmons from Hero Tent, followed by Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Armendares, as I see it here. Uh, yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I just want to share the sentiment that my um, other San Jose community members have shared that the Thomas statue perpetuates white supremacy. And I just want to reiterate that the community here has been asking for change for such a long time. The Chicano moratorium has been asking for this very meeting to happen for such a long time. And leaders like the mayor had, who posted in October that this, com- this, this meeting would happen, it didn't happen. And the people of the city are let down time and time again. And that, that can't happen anymore. And it, if it's not abundantly clear that in this meeting right now, the vast majority of San Jose residents are not okay with the Fallon statue and they want it removed immediately. And if the city still decides that they're going to keep it up or that nothing is going to be done, that is, that is a huge issue. It, it goes beyond the Fallon statue, but it really goes to the city not listening to its constituents and listening to what the people want. It's a public art display, art, and we pay the tax dollars to keep it up. Thank you. Follow Hero Tent, H-E-R-O underscore T-E-N-T. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Simmons, for your comment. Appreciate it. Next comment. Next, we have Rebecca Armendares um, and followed by Elisa Marina Alvarado. Rebecca, when you're ready. Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Rebecca Armendares. I'm an indigenous Chicana woman. My family has been in this area for five generations and on this continent for a millennia. San Jose is my second home. It's where I've worked uh, and played professionally most of my life. Um, And as a county seat, it's where I and so many others go when we need official documents or when we need to address countywide issues, to visit art or events um, that we can't access in Gilroy. When the statue was erected, I was offended as I equate Fallon to a similar, much like, uh, I equate Fallon to a figure much like Columbus. Uh, He represents genocide, murder, theft, slavery, and oppression. I don't believe in erasing history, but we do need conversations, education, and, con- uh, and context. There should also be balance. If there are monuments, let's balance them. We should have monuments erected as well to our Chicana and native elders like Ernestina Garcia, Sofia Mendoza, and the thousands of women who worked and gave their lives and sweat and youth to the canneries. Um, Sorry, Rebecca, we, we heard you. We appreciate your comment. Thank you. 
and again, if we have time at the end, we will be able to potentially come back to people who want to speak again. Next, we have Elisa Marina Alvarado, followed by, followed by whose name, whose name is call, in call in user. user. Speak. Yes, good evening. Thank you for this opportunity to speak about the fallen statue. Um, I would first like to invite all uh, people, all the participants and all in our community to <clears throat> recognize that this land is Muwek Maloney homeland. And so the statue is represents a genocide uh, against not only Mexican people, but against indigenous people of California. So I wanted to comment on the psychosocial, the negative psychosocial effects of public art such as this, or um, as, as I really appreciate the comment before, it's not really public art, it, it's a, a monument to genocide. There are many studies uh, like about Indian mascots and art about this, like this, that uh, point to lowering of self-esteem, negative self-image, the silencing um, you know, of youth who do not see themselves in a positive way, youth of color who do not see themselves in a positive way in a city that ha glorifies white uh, Sorry to mute there. Thank you for your comment. Next, next comment. Next, we have uh, someone whose name is call in user two, uh, followed by Rachel R. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. Oh, good. So it sounds like the consensus is that you should remove the statue. <laughs> Pretty unanimous. Um, I would appreciate if everyone would please try to remember that we can't whitewash our history. Um, you can remove offensive statues, but we need to, I think they need to be left um, there as a reminder of the history that San Jose has. Um, I'm a longtime San Jose resident, over 25 years of San Jose, and I love our diversity. And um, I had no idea that the brown people of San Jose um, were so offended by this statue. The only thing I can think of is if you want to keep the statue, perhaps you could put some kind of plaque or something, a sign talking about the history of um, Thomas Fallon and some of the, you know, controversies. Thank you. Call in user number two. For your comment. Next we have Can you hear me? Rachel, that you, Rachel? My name is Rachel and the Thomas Fallon statue is racist, period. It upholds white supremacy, fascism, colonization, and genocide. It's disrespectful to have a statue that represents the literal mass murder of a majority of the population in this city. Art is a representation of this city. And I think by having it in public, we show the world that we are okay with genocide. We show that we are okay with white supremacy. And Sam spoke on this like it happened a long time ago, but colonization is still happening. As we heard from that one call in, racism is still alive and well here on Mewekma Ohlone land. And part of moving forward from that is taking that statue down. Put your money where your mouth is. Sam Licardo tweeted the Thomas Fallon statue is controversial, but it isn't. Genocide isn't controversial. Tear the statue down. Thank you, Rachel. Appreciate your comment. Okay, next we have uh, Peter, followed by Marco Lopez. Peter, when you're ready. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Hello, my name is Peter Ortiz. I'm a trustee for Santa Clara County Board of Education. I'm here to speak in opposition of the statue, which is a symbol of colonialism and cultural genocide. The fact that art that insulted law enforcement was removed without hesitation and the art that depicts a murderer who dehumanized our local native and Mexican population still stands as an example of the continued lack of respect for our gente. We should not be glorifying anyone who advocated for colonialism and the murder and theft of an entire population. Also, this whole process has put the feelings of the privileged before bringing justice to historical injustices. The privileged will never agree to equality. Therefore, we shouldn't wait for, their to, for them to jump on board to our solutions. Take the statue down now. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate your comment. 
Next comment. Next, we have Marco Lopez, followed by a user with the name Justice followed Now Talks Later. Justice Now Talks Later. Thank you. This is Marco Lopez. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay. You know, um, I was uh, here in San Jose last about the time this issue came up, and it's obviously a visceral reaction than one can have. I, I have Mexican blood, indigenous blood running through my veins. And so it would come as no surprise if I told you which side of the war I would have fought in. Uh, one thought that enters my mind, you know, statues in and of, its, uh, of themselves are one thing, but there's a real lack of education regarding the Mexican-American War. And it's coincidental that we're talking about Thomas Fallon. And there was Thomas Corwin, senator from Ohio, who gave the most impassioned speech on the Senate floor in 1846 against the war against Mexico. Uh, I've written an article on it and uh, basically what he said, and he saw it as what it was. It was a war of greed and acquisitiveness, which he called a flagitious, flagitious notion Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Appreciate your time. Um, next comment. Next, we have Justice Now Talks Later. It's the username, followed by Valentina Coronel. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, so the uh, Fallon statue must be removed. It must be pulled up. Uh, every last brick, every last piece of it must be taken out, melted down. It is a clear symbol of white supremacy, racism, genocide, and U.S. colonialism. That statue has been controversial since it uh, uh, was first commissioned, uh, and the city has continued to ignore our Chicano and Chicana brothers and sisters who have protested it since its commission, begging the question, who does the city council uh, or who does the city uh, serve? Does it serve the people or does it serve this statue and the symbol <clears throat> and the institutions that it symbolizes. Finally, I'd like to uh, wrap up by saying healing and unity <clears throat> can only uh, come after justice. No justice, no peace. I yield my time. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Next comment. Next comment's from Valentina uh, Coronel, followed by Brenda Zendejas. Um, hi, um, my name is Valentina Coronel and I'm a high school student. Um, I also come from a Latino um, native background and it makes me extremely uncomfortable that the city still has that statue up. Um, as an immigrant, it makes me feel extremely unwanted and unwelcome. And I can't imagine what my fellow Mexican Americans think about this or how they feel. Um, as a non-Mexican Latino, it already makes me, like I, we're already constantly learning about um, white people in US history. So why is it that we have to constantly see that when we go outside? We need more um, Latino representation and I think the statue should be taken down. Thank you, Valentina, appreciate your comment. Great to see young people here voicing their opinions. So go ahead, next comment. Hi, good evening. Um, thank you guys for allowing us to have this space today. I think it's time to listen to your community. Your community has spoken today and expressed what, express what this statue means to them. I'm disappointed that it took this long that our Latinos in leadership have stayed complacent and not asked for this removal. You all want our support and want to use your last name for votes. It's time to listen and start with actions, please. Mayor, I know you're a good listener. And if you want to leave a legacy, it starts with removing this. Basta. And it's time for cambio. I know change makes people uncomfortable, but that's the process to heal this community and unify it. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda, appreciate your comment. Next comment. So the next comment will be from, uh, apologies for mispronouncing this, uh, with Chike Nuofia, followed by Stephanie's iPhone. Chike, when you're ready. Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, sir. All right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually born and raised in, in Nigeria and West Africa. I'm here to, in solidarity with my brothers and sisters um, that are indigenous and own this land. And I think, oh, I, it just breaks my heart that 
those that own the land are the ones that are coming to ask what they need. I, I, it is just utterly ridiculous. And I think if, if oh my gosh, I'm lost for words, but I, I just, listen, uh, I think this conversation just needs to stop. Um, the people that own the land cannot be told what is injurious to them. This white explaining of what people should feel or how they should feel needs to stop. And so let the statue go. The people that own this land have said so, and that should be the end of the conversation. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you, Hige, appreciate your comment. Just FYI to everybody that um, we will be doing another round if you, if you already spoke and you won't have something else to say. Um, so please um, let us know and we'll, we'll get you back up on stage <laughs> on the mic so you can speak, but um, just FYI. Thanks, Chandra. Next we'll have Stephanie, uh, well, sorry, Stephanie's iPhone, followed by Olivia Navarro. Yes, my iPhone is speaking for me tonight. Um, it's an obvious consensus that this city and its people are very, the majority are very against this statue. So I feel a little redundant to basically say everything that was so eloquently said. I do have to say, Mayor Sam Licardo, you sharing your family's history, I wish would have been an awesome insight into our city's leadership. But quite honestly, it felt like gaslighting because this came directly from somebody who has worked against his community that's asked for the removal of the statue. You villainized us and yet you gaslight us with your own Chicano story. It's not okay and I don't appreciate it. Statue needs to be taken down. We need to figure out something better to put up. We need to unify our people and stop with this dividing. It's not erasing history to take the stat statue down. The guy erased history when he came here. We don't need to remember him. We can move on. And I myself, as a Latina, would really appreciate it if you could stop placating us and make it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, for your comments. Appreciate it. Next comment. Next, we have Olivia Navarro, followed by Jasmine L. Good evening. My name is Olivia Navarro and I'm the chair of Movimiento Democratic Coalition. I'm a born and raised San Josean and proud to say that I was ra raised by a proud Native American woman. I think back walking down in downtown San Jose as a child with my Nana and always wondering what the statue with the horses was and didn't really know who Fallon was. As I grew up and I did more research and I, really, I was really upset and could not understand why San Jose would glorify and promote a murderer. It is not something that San Jose can be proud of and, we, and when we learn who Thomas Fallon was and what he did. I ask you to remove the statue and stop using our tax dollars on promoting individuals that participate in genocide and white supremacy. I support public art that uplifts our community and where all residents in San Jose can be proud of. San Jose should lead by example for the rest of the United States, but sadly, San Jose has fallen behind and it comes, it comes down to equity. Ya basta, Thomas Fallon's time's up in San Jose. It's time to buck Fallon, Fallon off. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you so much, Olivia, for your comments. All right, next we have um, Jasmine L. followed by Carlos Velasquez. Hi, I'm Jasmine, and as a San Jose native and tribal member with the Ajamawi Band of the Pitt River Nation, we stand in solidarity with our Ohlone relatives and ask that you remove the Fallon statue immediately. We ask that you completely demolish it and not simply relocate it. What we choose to elevate through monuments shows what we value as a community. So keeping the statue would show that the city of San Jose and its leadership values genocide, rape, stolen land, white supremacy, and injustice. Although we're still waiting on justice for Gregory Johnson 12 years later, so maybe that statue is in line with what San Jose's leadership values. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Next comment. Next we have Carlos Velasquez, followed by Darlene Tennis, I believe it's pronounced. Saludos, my name is Carlos Velasquez. I'm proud to be born and raised in San Jose. Gracias to all who have spoken and to our city le leaders on here listening. I found it funny to hear Mayor Licardo say at the beginning that he tried to learn more about Thomas Fallon only to have found very little. 
if we can't find much history about a white person here in San Jose, imagínate wanting to learn about an indigenous, Chicano, black or Vietnamese person from San Jose. I ask that the Fallon statue, statue be taken down and if not destroyed, put some place where proper context can be added. I also ask our city leaders to make prominent, truly prominent San Jose's multicultural history. Let's hurry up and officially rename the Peralta Adobe, the Manuel Gonzalez Adobe. I love the recognition of Ernesto Galarza. Let's make his birthday a city holiday. Let's see a public art piece that recognizes Sofia Mendoza and the Roosevelt student walkouts. Let's make Viet Tan Nguyen required reading in our schools. Let's celebrate a true San Jose. Gracias. Thank you, Mr. Velasquez. Um, next public comment. Next we have Darlene Tennis. I had actually put my hand back down, but you know what? I do want to, because we were talking about arts, recognize the artist of the piece, which is Robert Glenn, particularly before it gets torn down. Um, it is a beautiful piece, but what it represents, again, is what the problem is. Um, you know, I did a lot of research on Carmel Castro Fallon, who was his wife. And in doing that, I, I did a lot of research on Thomas Fallon as well. And I didn't find him that remarkable, good or bad to deserve a statue. I think that we need to really rethink who we put on a pedestal because we need to stop celebrating conquerors and war and start celebrating people who bring together peace and unity in our community. I also really wanna recognize women. We really, I know the, the Santa Clara County has this women's fund that they're working on, but you know, 50% of the population, give or take once in a while, is women and yet less than half a percent of recorded history is women, less than 8%. Thank you, Darlene, appreciate your comments. And we will have time to go back to those. So um, that is all of the commenters uh, who had their hand raised. We wanna make sure that there is an opportunity now for any Spanish speaking or Vietnamese speaking members of the public who have not yet commented to raise their hand and uh, when we see your hand raised, we'll make sure that you're called. We're gonna give it uh, maybe 10 seconds here so that you have the opportunity to raise your hand if you have any comments that you would like to make. So this time we're gonna wait here for Spanish and Vietnamese speakers. Okay, thank you everyone for waiting. Uh, again, if you um, need to, if you would like to make a comment in Spanish or Vietnamese, uh, please raise your hand at any time and we will make sure that your comments are interpreted to the audience. Uh, for those of you listening here in English today, you may not be aware that this meeting is being interpreted live in Spanish as well as Vietnamese, which uh, you can access from the uh, bottom window, uh, the bottom of the Zoom window. So our Spanish and Vietnamese speakers are able to uh, hear everything that's being said here. And we also have the ability to um, hear their public comment interpreted. So if there is any comments, we'll make sure to capture those. Okay, um, thank, you. thank you, Mateus, appreciate it. Um, okay, so we, we do have some more time. So we want to make sure that if you do have something else to say that you wanna to add to your comment, please raise your hand. Um, also, I just wanted to prompt a few um, maybe questions that we might wanna have, like where, where, uh, what kind of art would you guys like to see? What would you like to see? And also any recommendations on where you would recommend the Fallon statue be placed or moved to? So if you have any comments on that, please raise your hand. Um, we also want to take any questions when it comes to process um, or next steps on what we're going to do, please raise your hand. Um, so I think we have some raised hands, Mateus. We'd like to move on to? Yep, so we are now going into the, uh, the repeat um, uh, commenters here. Um, so we'll start first with Amanda Rawson. And um, sorry, for the second round of comments, it will be one minute. We encourage you to answer the questions, provide comments that you haven't already provided, um, but we are taking notes on your input today. Um, Amanda, whenever you're ready, Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Rawson. I actually work in public art. Um, I'm second generation San Jose and I grew up in East San Jose. Um, 
I more want to speak on Eric Bowie's piece, Americana. We've had a lot of conversation about the Fallon statue, rightfully so. I completely understand. But I understood coming into this meeting that we were going to be talking about both art pieces and we're not doing that, which makes absolute sense. So I would like to suggest, I'm also part of San Jose Arts Advocates, which is a grassroots or, um, group. If any of you want to look us up, please do. So I'd like to suggest that there be a separate conversation about Americana, about the process, about the people who worked hard to um, volunteer their time as jurors and as staffers uh, to work on bringing uh, economic um, prosperity for local artists. And then their artwork got taken down. Um, it wasn't just Eric's art piece that got taken down, it was the rest of his, his fellow artists. And if those who tried to visit their artwork in the last few days, they couldn't, and now they just have to be able to see it online. So that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you so much, Ms. Rawson. Next comment. Next, uh, we're gonna go to Sergio Perez, uh, who has not yet commented actually. Uh, Sergio, you'll be invited to unmute yourself. Very good. Okay, whenever thank you're ready. Thank you. Very, thank you. Um, personally, uh, when I see the statue, it, it's very uh, offensive to me. And it, what it reminds me is how we have basically destroyed the Native American, the Hispanic culture in, in the whole county, not just, not just the statue, but it reminds me that every place I go, I see that the remnants of the, of the culture are being erased quickly. And I do have an idea as to what to do. With the statue, you, you please get, get rid of it. It has had enough life already. And so let's, let's, let's move it out. I do wanna see a Native American statue there. It's long enough to create an Ohlone or, or something to commemorate the Native Americans. So that, that would be my, my preference with uh, uh, this whole thing. And thank you for having this. Uh, comment period. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Appreciate your comment. Next comment. Okay, so next we're going to go to Ruben Navarro, who also has not yet spoken. Ruben, when you're ready. Hi, it's, um, it's actually Delilah. I wanted to speak on this issue. Um, I'm born and raised in San Jose, California, and I'm a high school, ch uh, Chicana, I'm speaking on opposition on keeping the Thomas Fallon statue. Please remove the stat this racist statue that promotes genocide and white supremacy. Keeping the statue brings down our community and interprets support of inequality towards our indigenous and Chicano Latinos. Chicano Chica, sorry, Chicano Latino population. I would love to see statues and art that support our community's diversity and promotes equality. Thomas Fallon's Time's Up in San Jose. Thank you. Thank you, Delilah. Again, love seeing young people speaking their voice and using their voice. All right, next comment. Next comment is from uh, Sid Lalmina. When you're ready. Yes, uh, considering that uh, the Chicano Mexicano population is very prominent in San Jose, we do need more art. We have, we have culture, we have a lot of culture, but it's not represented in San Jose. Uh, in terms of this uh, genocidal statue, it has to be melted down and, uh, and uh, you know, put up a, the st a statue of uh, the Ohlone representation of this land, or even Tiburcio Vasquez that, uh, uh, that resisted the occupiers that were killing our gente. Those are the people that we recognize. Those are our heroes. And uh, in terms of the art, that art represents the brutality that we have been experiencing by the San Jose PD for many, many years, okay? And uh, the PD might be uh, you know, upset about it, but that's what they do every day. We, you know, we lose a lot of our children because of them. It's a good, it's a good representation. Thank you so much for your comment. Next comment. Next we have Paul, so <clears throat> sorry, Paul Soto followed by Fallon was a colonizer. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, turn off your you video, please, Paul. I think it'll help with your um, video, your speech. 
Okay, you know what? I'll stop, I'll turn off the video. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's perfect. Good. Thank you. Oh, 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 okay, uh, Paul Soto from the Horseshoe. Um, I would like to create within the vacuum of removing because I think it's a, it's very clear, and I trust that our uh, officials are going to remove the statue. So with that said, I would like the icon Hi. of Sofia Mendoza placed at Roosevelt Park because she was fourfold. She challenged, she didn't, she challenged us to be our best selves. And this is the way that she did it through education, through the education sector. She did it through housing. She did it through uh, uh, challenging police brutality. And she did it through uh, 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 healthcare. And so she had a comprehensive view of what San Jose should look like in service to the citizens here. And there is no Magdalena Carrasco, there is no Sabia Arenas, there is no Maya Sarsa, there is no Rebecca Arnares, or Sofia Mendoza, Ledway, Sally Armendares from, uh, from, from South County. These are women that we need to, to have represented in our community so that they, so that the younger generations that are coming up can see themselves reflected. I think that, the, uh, I think that we need to contextualize uh, the Thomas Fallon statue, and I would like the assistance from the city to have a California museum uh, developed in San Jose and statues to contextualize. Thank you, Mr. Soto. We appreciate your comment. Remember, if you have any questions on processes or next steps, please raise your hand um, as well as an additional comment. We want to make sure we get everybody's voice in here. And next, we have Andrew Crockett, followed by uh, Yolanda Guerra. Hello again. So speaking of Thomas Fallon, yes, I'd love to see the statue move to history San Jose in particular because of its historical significance to the late 20th century and early 21st century. We are creating history being here this evening. And this statue is a testimony to the progress we're going to make when that statue is removed. And one of the things that really drives home that this statue was not about just celebrating our local history is that there were so many other great options. Uh, Dr. C Benjamin Corey, the founder of the first public hospital in the Bay Area, Santa Clara Infirmary, he was one of the early settlers here. He, he was a first formally educated doctor. He was a healer. You could have him on horseback, but they chose a person who would divide rather than unite us. And if I was to unite us today, I would want Captain Jose Ramon Pico of the California Lancers, the Spanish speaking Union Cavalry Unit of the American Civil War to have a statue. Thank you, Mr. Crockett, for your comment. Next comment. Um, I do want to say a couple of things um, I didn't say. I'm, so I'm, an, I'm a high school art teacher, um, and I'm also a recipient of the. Um, uh, the public art that's in the at the airport, and I do appreciate that opportunity to be a part of that. I'm very excited about that. I'm very happy that I was able to participate in that. Um, next steps. I would like to know what the next steps are in the process of removing a statue such as Fallon. Um, and also, I just want to throw out suggestion um, or some idea that um, a lot of um, we need to have more support for our young people. And if we could have some other types of areas where we can support um, our art, our students who are who are who are artists uh, in our community. I mean, again, I'm happy to be the part of the recipient, but I also would like to have some of my students be participated within the city. I know we have downtown doors, and that's wonderful. But even more of that. Um, the other thing um, was to think about maybe if we do have other statues that we have com a committee of di a diverse committee um, that will look into other people of our community that can be represented um, as statues or or something some kind of art form um, and um, again 
No, we appreciate your comment, Yolanda, um, and your question. Um, I'm going to um, ask Carrie, before we move on to the next question or comment, I'd like Carrie uh, from the Office of Cultural Affairs to answer her question about the process of the removal. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. Sorry for the delay, just getting back on video. <laughs> Trying to create bandwidth for everybody. Um, so thank you. The process that we've identified is the council approved. There's a deaccession process. It starts with the public art committee. It's a very public process. And so that's where it would begin. Um, but prior to that, what we are planning to do is really all the various departments within the city the council, the mayor, the city manager's office, the office of cultural affairs, as well as the arts commission, the public art committee. We're going to, you know, we're really taking notes and we're really listening and want to learn and think about how we can advance this conversation in a positive way forward. So that's probably our first step. And I, you know, if any of anybody from the city wants to elaborate, please do. We're going to, our plan is thus far is that we're going to take the feedback and input from this forum, which has been really good. I thank everybody for their participation and thoughtful words, but we're going to um, kind of, con we're going to synthesize it and we're going to generate an information memo, which will be distributed. And then from that, we're going to think about, you know, one, one of the things we asked at the beginning is, you know, what are the future conversations that we we would like to have. Um, I know some people have suggested that. So that's going to be one of the considerations. And then how do we move forward? You know, if there, it, it sounds like there's a lot of consensus about really having this go to the public art committee for evaluation. So that's probably the next thing we're going to be looking at. But there is a, a, a council approved deaccession policy that is a very, that outlines uh, the criteria for deaccession and also the public process. So this is the form that will help guide those next steps. So I, I hope that answers the question. Um, and as we talked at the beginning of the meeting, all the public art committee meetings and the arts commission meetings are public meetings. So, you know, I just want you to know that we, in the public art program is uh, very much found or grounded in public process. So we want you to participate. Um, so, and I'll just leave it there and see if anybody wants to elaborate on that. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Um, anybody from the city want to elaborate at all? Please chime in. Um, if not, we will move on to the next comment. Okay, I don't think so. All right, Carrie, thank you so much. Next comment or question. Okay, next we're gonna go to a new speaker, Christian Ruiz. Sorry, Jennifer. Christian, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, we hear you. Hi, um, I participated in a public sit-in at San Licardo's house last year and received this name of uh, this page of names. I'd like to read them to you. Rudy Cardenas, Steve Salinas, Antonio Guzman Lopez, Diana Showman, Philip Watkins, AJ Phillips, Richard Harpo Paquez, Anthony Nunez, Jesus Gini, Jacob Dominguez, Isai Lopez, Jennifer Vasquez, Richard Lua, Daniel Pham, Bikau Titran, and Benjamin Quiros. All unarmed victims of SJPD. I found that very frustrating that you weren't there to hear those stories. Thank you, Mr. Ruiz, for your comment. Appreciate it. Next comment. Okay, next we have someone under the username of Phil, who has not spoken yet. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Um, so, you know, I won't exactly say what to do with the statue. I think the voice of the people who spoke 
before me, um, as well as the people who spoke through many decades of demands uh, from the public um, up until the recent protest, which clearly drew a large X on it. It couldn't have been said more clearer that people want that statue gone. Um, you know, Malcolm, uh, uh, MLK said the riot is the language of the unheard. The fact that it escalated to that is a, cl is a clear testament to the fact that people don't feel heard. The only time y'all decided to host this was after that. JFK said, those who make peaceful revolution impossible make violent revolution inevitable. We expect you to remove it and I don't even know, melt it publicly, use the metal for something else, make a new statue like for Cesar Chavez or something out of it. I don't know. Drop the charges against the protesters. Don't test the people and their patients. It's not good policy. Defund the police. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate your comment. Okay. Next, we have um, Helen Sims, who has not yet spoken. I have had the privilege and the honor of teaching US history for many years at Oberfeld High School. Some days my job was harder than others because the history that I needed to teach wasn't in the books. We know that our history is flawed, but it is even more important at this day and time for us to make sure that we honor heroes that have contributed to our community in a positive way. This is a time that we can step up and do what is right. It's always right to do what is right. Thank you. Thank you, Helen, appreciate your comment. Next comment. Okay, next we have Stephanie Avila, who has not yet spoken. Hi, so I have, I'm Steph Siphon. <laughs> Hi guys, I just wanted to double back and I'm behind our community where I think that we really should replace that with something that celebrates the indigenous people that were here and erased by the man that we have some, uh, celebrated in front of us. It only makes sense. It really doesn't make sense for anything else to go in its place if you're considering this a healing activity. Otherwise, you're just kind of deciding to forget about it and move on. So. That's where my vote is. And I really hope that the council is behind us and really sees where this community is coming from. You have a number of very well-educated members of your community speaking out to you today compassionately and passionately about what exactly they want to see. I'm going to say now, if we don't see this change after this, after hearing all these words, then we now know that our words fall on deaf ears. So please take this as a moment as we're talking to you. If it's not answered, then we got our answer. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Appreciate your comment. Hi. Okay. So we are now going to go next to uh, Kaza Tepehua. And I don't see them on now. Okay. So Adrian Vargas, uh, is, um, you are unmuted now, so you can speak. Adrian, can you hear me? Is he unmuted? He's unmuted, Matthias. Uh, I, I don't see him in the chat in the here anymore. So we'll we can come back to him. So next, um, we will go to Lydia Donis. Oh, thank you. Just want to confirm that you can hear me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The taking down of the Americana and other works of art without a formal process is an example of how white supremacy is upheld and maintained by the city of San Jose. The fact that a small group of people have the power to influence a city manager to take down a piece of art is an abuse of power. The taking down of the Americana is a city sanctioned act of silencing the much needed conversations about racism, the abuse of power and use of violence by the police department. I ask that we, um, I ask that the whole exhibit be displayed in public places for us to start conversations around power, privilege, race, and restoring of relationships and for healing to begin in our communities. I think there should be a separate space to give respect to the artist. This is an example of unintended consequences of city processes that are not geared towards true community engagement. I'd like to know what the process is to appeal the man city manager's decision. And I'd also like to encourage youth to be engaged in the planning and creation of public art. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Donis. Um, at either um, Kim or Angel, would you guys like to answer her question? Respond to her question? Yeah. With respect to Americana, I think Kim has been a point on that, so I'm going to defer that to Kim. Yeah, hi, everybody. I'm, I'm Kim Wallace, one of the deputy city managers. Um, I, I hear and understand and am very open to the, the criticism that you're making of that decision. Um, the decisions that we have to make are often made under sort of really difficult circumstances. Um, in this case, you know, the city manager has um, responsibility for city operations. And there was concern that a timely decision needed to be made um, because of operational issues and concern for safety at the airport and a number of things. It was a difficult decision. Um, we accept the criticism and, um, and hear that. Um, I think the reality is we can keep talking about that decision and how it was difficult and it was one of those situations I hope I'm never in where there's a lot of conflicting values and but at the end of the day the the artist exhibition had been up for 30 days and the artwork is in no way removed from the permanent collection um, which is online um, and the other exhibitions have been rotating into the airport so I'm happy to continue to answer questions about that, but the artwork has not been removed from the digital exhibition and, and we're going to continue to celebrate that. Thank you, Kim. Okay, um, next comment or question. The next comment uh, will come from Amber, I believe, or it may be Ambar. Um, We'll ask you to unmute and then you can begin. Sure. Um, my name is Ambar. I am a resident of San Jose on the east side. Uh, and I just want to say that I really want the Falan statue to come down. There is, I think it's really telling um, when we haven't already done that, that we're interested in preserving history that has harmed so many people that currently live on this land. So I think that it's the right thing to do and it would serve to heal um, a lot of the pain that has been caused over the last couple of years and has been caused historically. So thank you. Okay, Mateus, really quick. I just wanna acknowledge council member uh, Raul Perales has joined us. So welcome council member. Uh, we'll go move on to the next comment. The next comment will come from Jessalyn Faust. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that I think it's really important that this art exhibition that's was displayed at the airport and taken down is put back up. I think it should be displayed in front of City Hall. I think that's the appropriate place for it. I think it's extremely problematic that we silence the type of art that tells those in power messages that they don't want to hear. And yet we amplify the voices of artists that praise genocide and colonialism. So I think that we need to refocus our city's priorities when it comes to the art that we have displayed. And we should be displaying any anti-police art right in front of City Hall. I think that is the appropriate place for it. Thank you, Jessalyn, appreciate that. Next comment. Next comment will be from Jorge. Hello, I hope you can hear me well. Thank you so much for the uh, opportunity to speak again. Um, yes, as I mentioned before, uh, just please remember Fallon was a terrorist. He was an invader. It was Mexico still when he came, uh, when he was 18 from Canada. It was Mexico still when um, the war was happening and he tried to uh, arm a revolution in Santa Cruz. So he is a terrorist having this statue, this monument in San Jose, 
for the Mexicans, at least for the Mexicans and the Native Americans is like, uh, all comparisons are awful, but is like having a Bin Laden monument in New York. It's kind of the same thing. It's someone that came and attacked Please remember the constitution of the first constitution of California was bilingual, fue hecha en español y en inglés. Y tenemos que recordar la importancia de la herencia que tenemos los mexicanos en este país. So please, uh, uh, Major Ricardo, you are one of us. Please keep that in mind all the time. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Jorge. Appreciate your comment. Next, we have Paige D, followed by Darlene Tennis. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to add a couple more things. Um, you know, you brought up the idea of relocating the statue. Again, I'm not going to talk so much on it because it's very clear we want that thing removed and taken down. At first, I was thinking it would be cool to melt it down and have, you know, local artists um, build something out of it. Somebody had mentioned a public melting of the statue. And I think that could really get a lot of people come together. Um, so that would be cool. But, you know, if you were to relocate it, where would you send it back to Ireland where this guy came from? I don't even think they would take it, you know. Um, I think you should definitely pair up with the Chicano Moratorium and um, they can give you a lot of really good ideas and probably suggest a lot of artists who deserve to be uh, displayed. And um, I, I yield my time. Thank you, Paige. Next comment. Next comment is from Darlene Tennis, followed by Brody. So I do want to see, I'm going to mention again, women, more women being recognized because we are such a small percentage. So again, Sophia Mendoza, Clara Shortridge Fultz, I believe, deserves a statue. She was remarkable. There's a lot of women that are remarkable. On another note, um, I'm really curious about this process of removal because it seems that the artwork in the airport was removed immediately. And yet people have been complaining for years about the Fallon statue. So can somebody explain the process to me a little bit clearer and why is there such a difference there? Great question, um, Darlene. Um, Karen, would you like to address that? Yeah, I can address that, or Kim, if you prefer. Um, I yeah. think that the, let, let me just say, I think fundamentally, um, I acknowledge the discrepancy, um, and Kim can speak to the difference, mm -hmm. but we very much want to keep our, our public process, a public, our public art program, and that work, a public process. Um, there are some, you know, not, and I'll turn it over to Kim if she wants to speak on behalf of, you know, the city manager's decision and the process involved in that. Yeah, I think we're lucky we have both permanent and temporary um, artworks in the collection. So I think the, the process that Carrie put in place was certainly a process that should apply to removal of an, an artwork, right? And the city manager was really clear that if an artwork was going to be removed um, any any time, like removed, like that it should go through that process, which is with the public art committee of the arts commission. Um, again, I just wanted to clarify, and I'm I you know I, I I understand the criticism and I don't disagree with it. Um, but in the case of the temporary exhibition at the airport, the city had made a commitment to the artists that the exhibitions would be up for 30 days. And so in this case, the exhibition had already been up for 30 days. And it was not the case that an individual artwork was taken down. The whole exhibition was taken down. Um, and I understand that it's a controversial decision, but it was just taken down three days earlier than it was had planned. So it was not the case that an individual artwork was removed. And as I said, the exhibition, all the artworks continue um, continue online. So in that information memo that the city manager sent to council, you know, the last line was just very strong that anytime an individual artwork would be, you know, taken down or removed, that there's a process for that and it should be followed. Um, the city manager in this case had authority over the, you know, the, the facility, right, as a public facility and, and um, the, the operations of the facility were of concern at that point.
Thank you, um, Kim and Carrie. Um, next comment. Okay, the next comment will be from Brody, followed by Rebecca Armendariz. Can you hear me all right? Cool. Yes. Uh, I'd like to first start with my apology to Matthias, our moderator. Uh, my comment was not meant to him. I just wanted to make that publicly known. It was meant to the man who clearly endorsed white supremacist ideologies. Uh, I'd like to start off with my recommendations of what to do with the statue. I say that it should be taken down publicly by indigenous and Latino leaders and then recycled for other art installations. Um, if that's not possible, I have other suggestions. We could put it to the police station because it clearly uh, upholds a lot of the values that the police in, uh, instill. Um, we could also, because Sam Licardo seems to be a big advocate for this, this statue, we could put it in his office. It seems like he'd really like it. Um, but if, if nothing else, um, I think that this should be put in a museum with the true history of the man uh, uh, who it embodies. And then in place of that, we should put a uh, put something by Latinx or indigenous artists. Um, there are unhoused indigenous artists, which would, if we commission those artists would give back to the community that we uh, uh, so very much seek to protect. Is there a person that we can email to commission that, get those commissions? Who would like to address that question? Yes, the, the, you can send uh, an email to Santa, the Office of Cultural Affairs, and that's San Jose Culture at San Jose CA .gov. Um, Alternatively, if you know you can send your comments um, to the Public Art Committee as well, and they actually have a forthcoming meeting. So, and then I should just let everybody know that's participating in this. Um, as I mentioned, we, we really want your input on the types of public art that you would like to see in the city of San Jose. Um, we do have a, a specified funding source that I've explained that does restrict, you know, the types and locations of artwork. But every year we go through a process by which we are developing a new public art work plan. And we take a look at the different types of revenue sources and the opportunities and the locations. And it very much has to be informed by the community. And so that happens in the spring. So that's a good time to be paying attention to our public art committee agendas so that you can integrate uh, your input into that. Um, so the email is, I, there's two emails for you. Um, there's cultural affairs at San Jose CA.gov or public art at San Jose CA.gov. And thank you, everybody. I look forward to hearing more from you. All righty. Thank you, Carrie. Appreciate that. Um, I just want to make a statement that if you made a comment, an offensive comment in the last round of comments, then we will not bring you back in. So I'm just I'm making that very clear. Thank you. Next comment. Next we have Rebecca, followed by Lori Valdez. Hi, folks. I, um, you know, just as as Chandra asked, uh, my suggestion uh, or the idea that I support uh, for what to do with the statue and what to place in its stead. Um, I'd like I like Mr. Crockett's idea of placing it in the San Jose. Um, history Museum, uh, where it can be uh, properly curated and folks who witness it, who see it, can um, be properly educated as to the history of this man, even though, as uh, Miss Dennis said, he probably isn't very interesting. You know, it's, it's better to have him there and, um, and for there to be a, a historical context uh, of who he was and what he did. Um, and I would like to see monuments or historical programs dedicated to champions like uh, Sofia Mendoza, Ernestina Garcia, and other um, trailblazers and champions of our community who are bold and courageous. Um, and lastly, I just like, or and also of uh, Moekva and Ohlone uh, peoples, right? I think we have the resources in our community to research and find um, survivors and historical figures. Thank you, Rebecca. Next, we have Lori Valdez, <clears throat> followed by Naya Sassano. 
Hi, um, I'm calling in regards to the American art that was removed and how quickly it was removed because it's a symbol of what what San Jose is about. Like that Fallon statue represents genocide and killing. That's what our top official um, city manager and the PD department, they don't represent our community. They're white. They don't re represent us, so they don't understand. And when they get uncomfortable, it's because they don't want to deal with how much they have failed the Latino community. If it makes them uncomfortable, oh well, so be it. Try to walk in the shoes of the Latino community who are being targeted, being hunted down, killed, ignored, and silenced since the inception of San Jose. There's a history of violence, and the San Jose PD ranking officers are always the first ones to complain about something when you call them out for their brutality. Change your ways if you don't want to be called out. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Next, we have Naya Sasano, followed by Brenda Zendejas. Hi. Um, first, I want to echo what Paige and Brody said. We don't want the statue moved. We want it removed by Indigenous, Latino, Black people, and we want it melted down and repurposed. Second, I have a very specific question for Mayor Licardo. Um, Mayor Sam Licardo, in the past year, you have not listened to community demand to defund SJPD. You regularly harass and further harm unhoused people in our community, and you have threatened to take away sanctuary policy in San Jose. This isn't comprehensive by any means, but simply put, we do not trust you right now. Are you willing to voice your public support for the removal of the Fallon statue to the people right here? Is the mayor on the line? I'm on the line now. Did you have the question? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to respond. Um, there's an awful lot packed into the question, so I think it, it would be helpful probably to be uh, forthright about the record. Um, in the last year, we've worked very hard with our partners at the county and others to get more than 1,500 of our unhoused residents permanently housed. We obviously have much, much work to do because this is a crisis. Um, I'm troubled that you would believe that uh, I've somehow or another been interested in doing something other than that, but we've been working very hard on it. Uh, secondly, with regard to the sanctuary policy that has existed, uh, I am in fact in 2007, the one who wrote a memorandum to uh, ensure that it was enshrined in city policy that our city police department would not in any way cooperate with ICE or assist um, in immigration enforcement. And I still believe that and I will continue to believe that. With regard to this statue, uh, I'm very open to a public process uh, that would ultimately result in the removal. I would like to help have the help of those who have information about the historic record. I started this talk by telling folks that I really tried to understand because it seemed to be a virtually unanimous opinion that Fallon had committed atrocities of some kind of racial nature. Uh, I've heard genocide, I've heard homicide, I've heard a host of horrible, uh, horrible things. And we have tried to find historians who can help us understand what, if anything, Fallon did. Um, what I have not yet found that record and I would encourage members of the community who feel strongly about this, who have historic information to please bring it forward. So that can then clearly inform me and the council that this is someone who has committed an atrocity of some kind, some racist act um, some act of violence, whatever it might be, that would be very helpful. From what I can tell, and this is, again, I'm not a historian, I'm not an expert, we just tried to understand, uh, Fallon was not a terribly consequential figure. And I would agree with those who are puzzled as to why there's a statue for him. He, I suppose he happened to be in the place at the moment that an American flag was flown. Um, but we can't figure out what exactly, at least I can't, uh, what he has done that is particularly helpful 
or for that matter, harmful, but I don't pretend to know all the facts. And so I would encourage you and plead with you. My email address is sam.licardo at sanjoseca.gov. Again, sam.licardo at sanjoseca.gov. I would be very much helped by those of you who may have better access to the historic record, who may know more, may have access to historians who can help us better understand this historic record and thereby easily justify taking down the statue. There's no question that there is strong emotion among many members of the community, anger and resentment toward this statue. That is certainly sufficient enough basis for us to say, we got to find a way to take it down. On the other hand, my understanding is it costs about $400,000 to do so and to move it to another part of the city or to put it in a warehouse or wherever we put it. And we've got a lot of needs in the city. And when I ran for office, I knocked on a lot of doors and I never once heard anybody say, the thing I'm most concerned about is taking down the Fallon statue. I'm hearing it loud and clear now because obviously this was something that was debated a lot decades ago. And now it's clearly on, uh, it's clearly in the public consciousness now. And so I would be enormously helped if those of you who have some knowledge about this historic record can provide it to us. It's clear that many people strong, feel, strongly feel that uh, Fallon has committed these horrible crimes. It'd be helpful for us to have that record. And then we will have a very clear basis for saying, let's move the statue. Uh, in the meantime, I'll consider, continue to listen to the community and be very open to the public process that results. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, appreciate that. All right, we'll move on to next comment or question. All right, next we have uh, someone who's not gone yet. Uh, a phone call in user titled call in user three. Uh, you can unmute yourself by clicking star six. Star six. Hey, hi, how's it going? Uh, I think every time there's a statue controversy, what happens is the indigenous people of San Jose and the Mexican people get moved out due to gentrification. This is just a sideshow. And granted, it's not a fast car spinning in circles, uh, you know, causing a little bit of mayhem. This is a sideshow. So you guys will think that they're going to do something for you and they're not. This, they, whatever happens to this statue, you won't be able to see it a move because you'll be gone because they're turning that thing into Google town and the indigenous people have uh, burial grounds in and around the area. And many still live in the downtown as do Mexican American people. And you're going to see you got, they're, they're going to get rid of you after they get rid of the statue or before. And I, I'm going to tell you the same thing happened with Columbus right around the Columbus statue removal, man, that's when all that gentrification came through and Sam knows it, and all the people who are for those developers know it. Thank you for your comment. Next comment. Next comment will be another new uh, speaker, Barbara Goldstein. You can unmute yourself and start when you're ready. Um, first of all, Thank you very much for having this forum. It's it's it was it was a really good idea, and I think that that um, it, great comments are coming out. I just want to point out two things, and that is, um, first of all, there are two criteria for deaccessioning work from the city's collection. One is that that apply here. One is public engagement, and we've had plenty of that tonight. And the other one is um, sustained public objection to the works of art. Uh, the only reason that I know this is because I used to run the program, but I'd say that with those two criteria, you don't have to prove whether Fallon committed something historically. It, you just basically met the two, two most important criteria for removing the artwork. Thank you very much for holding this meeting. It's been really illuminating. Thank you. Uh, next, we will have Brenda Zendejas followed by Veronica Amador. Hi, good evening. Actually, I had a different comment, but after hearing the mayor's words, I have to change my words right now. Um, talk about throwing the dagger more in our hearts right now. After you heard the community to say you need proof, 
I want proof. What makes him someone that deserves a statue? What makes him someone that you feel that you have to glorify and defend every time someone has to say something? Because I want that proof. Send it to my email at brendasendejas with two S's at gmail.com. Because right now, I don't know where in history to look at to see what this man has done. We are not here begging, and I want to make sure you guys know we are not in any form begging. We're not secondhand citizens here asking for anything. We're demanding because we, the people, put all of you in your seats, especially you. And I am really disappointed that you feel that you need proof to remove this statue. Are you okay? Thank you. Okay, we next we have uh, Veronica Amador, followed by Justice Now Talks Later. Great, thank you. And um, I, we, my daughter and I have been hearing this conversation throughout, and she would like to make a, a comment, so I'm going to let her speak. Um, hi, my name is Isabella, and I'm, and I'm a kid at San Antonio. I'm a student at San Antonio Elementary, and um, I just want to say that they should take the statue down because um, it's racist and I don't think it's really it's good no creo que sea bueno. that um, kids who are learning history need to learn about that because it's just not really like appropriate for them because um, it's not like it's racist and kids should not be learning that at their age. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Veronica, I appreciate that. Um, we just wanna know, we're gonna have the next couple speakers go. If you spoke twice, unfortunately, um, we don't have time to move forward with more questions or comments. We have a few more comments that we wanna state and we wanna let people know where they can find the recording and. Um, different information. So um, then we have a few more people that have not spoken or this would be their second time to go and they will move on. Thank you. Okay, so next we have Justice Now <clears throat> talks later, followed by Kathy Cambiano, I believe it's pronounced. Uh, hello, so I wanted to refer back to some comments made earlier by Miss Carey. Uh, and this is not directed specifically just at her, but at all of you in general. Uh, I don't think you quite understand where we are all coming from. We, the people, uh, are not asking you to compile our comments, to look to some policy or engage some process. We are demanding that you remove that statue uh, completely, thoroughly, and uh, melt it down. We do not want it, uh, and we are not asking for uh, your permission to get rid of it. We are telling you as your bosses, since you all serve us, to get rid of it. And we're not asking for a timeline of months or years or whatever uh, so that you can kick it down the road with your little process because the process in politics is the last vestige of a scoundrel. To Sam's point of this taking $400,000 to remove that statue, I assure all of you that that statue can be removed completely, thoroughly, overnight, for free by members of this community. So we don't wanna hear any more excuses. We don't want timelines in the future. We want that statue removed and we want it removed now. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Mateus. Okay, next we have Kathy Cambiano and that would be the end of the public comment. Um, all the other people, I know there's some people have raised their hands again, but we wanna limit it to just two times um, since it is getting late now. Um, Kathy, when you're ready. Okay, I hope you can hear me. Yes, okay. Um, I just seem to recall when the statue was um, in discussion years ago, uh, it was, Tom McHenry's pet project. It was his big hero. And I just remember it being this god awful amount of money to produce the thing. And, you know, it was just a ridiculous amount of money. And it was his big project. Um, that's what I remember about the thing. And it just, 
obscene amount of money. And I would rather see it put towards something like Cesar Chavez, um, somebody who had roots in San Jose in a positive way. That's what I'd like to see it put towards. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a comment from AJ. Go ahead when you're ready. Okay. Sorry, I just saw the timer still going. Awesome. Um, so I just, I'm just confused. I don't understand why you guys still even have the statue up when the Christopher Columbus statue went down. You guys should have taken this one down as well. And uh, I seem to remember Licardo specifically <clears throat> when we kept going back and forth with removing the Christopher Columbus statue. We had to have a ton of, you know, protest and all of this stuff showing up to these meetings. And I remember Licardo was like, okay, you know what? You guys are gonna be a thorn on my side. It's gonna be the same thing. So why not speed up the process? Stop wasting everyone's time. We want the statue removed, remove it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and next we have uh, Raul Perales. Can you unmute yourself? And when you're ready. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, just uh, this is Councilman Raul Perales representing the District 3 area, the area where actually the Tom Fallon statue uh, currently resides. Uh, just want to thank everybody for participating tonight. My, uh, my office uh, wanted to ensure we had robust participation. And so, uh, and actually uh, really excited with the turnout tonight on a, on a Friday night. Uh, and I've been listening, listening intently uh, since the, the beginning uh, of all the comments uh, and the presentations. I uh, just want to say thank you to, to everybody for uh, participating tonight. Um, and personally, uh, I am uh, intent and, and supportive of uh, the process to go down to remove the statue. Um, and I know a lot of people have their personal opinions on on that and, and, and how quickly and how things may move. Um, but uh, we do have a, a process for that and uh, supportive of us moving down that direction. I think we've certainly heard a lot of uh, clear commentary tonight in, in regards to that matter. Um, and uh, also am, am open to, to hearing uh, more community comment after this fact as well uh, through my office um, and, and appreciate again, everybody participating. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Okay, next we have, um, uh, where'd it go? Sorry, one second. Uh, uh, Yuri Seeger, uh, Dana Harris Seeger, but um, one moment while we uh, mute you. Okay, Yuri, when you're ready. Hi, um, if you can hear me, yeah, my name's Dana Harris Seeger. I am the 2020 um, Artist Laureate for Santa Clara County. And um, something struck me about um, the Thomas Fallon sculpture being a pet project of a politician. And there's such strong um, opinion about it being taken down while some art piece that actually was taken down that was made by a resident of um, the city, uh, Eric Bowie, um, it was taken down and that was a voice of the people. And I think that there's something wrong when a politician's pet project is um, put on display and a city resident's artwork is taken down. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, I just wanna thank everybody for participating. We still have a hundred people here and this is amazing. And I'm just so grateful. I think that I hope you, everybody here got, got to understand and see that the city really wants to do the right thing. And we really wanna move things forward. So we appreciate everybody's comments. We want to let everybody know that you will find, you'll be able to find the recording and also um, closed caption transcription in English on the um, office of the San Jose Cultural Affairs um, page, which is sanjoseculture.org, okay? And if you have any questions or comments, I know uh, many of them have put up their emails or have stated their emails um, on the follow-up questions. So I wanted to uh, last, but definitely not least, bring in our mayor to say a few closing comments for tonight. So uh, mayor. Chandra, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for moderating. Thank you, Matias, uh, for your work as well and, uh, and helping 
uh, the conversation. I want to thank everybody who took the time to speak. Um, we knew this would be a difficult conversation. There'd be a lot of frustration about the fact for many residents that this, and I'll speak here just about the felon statute. The statue has been there uh, for many years against the objections of many residents. Of course, there was a very public process that happened back then two decades ago. Um, this is our time to reconsider all that. And that is exactly why we're having this hearing so we can hear from you. It is clear what the sentiment is of the more than 100 people who gathered here. Uh, and uh, I am taking that back with me. As I said, I am going to support the public process. My uh, interest in hearing and seeing information that you might have in the historical record was not meant to be a challenge. It was not meant to be an obstacle. It is simply an inquiry. And these are questions I think we all ought to ask ourselves because look, we just went through four years in this country where the truth wasn't very well regarded uh, by those in leadership. I want to have some fidelity to the factual record as we're making this decision. So if you have information, I encourage you to share it with us uh, at the city. Again, my email, sam.licardo at sanjoseca.gov. We would very much welcome it as we ensure that we have a factual record that enables this process to go forward. And I thank you all for taking the time and I look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you, Mayor. Again, I just wanna tell everybody uh, from the city, uh, from me as a community leader and a longtime community member, we appreciate your time. It is a Friday night, everybody has family. We got things going on, you know, it, these are hard times. So I just wanna say thank you for being here and participating. I've seen several activists, community leaders. Um, we, we all love our city and we all wanna move things forward. So I just want you to trust as your facilitator, that's exactly what I want as well. And we will continue this work and work together to make, sh make sure things happen and make sure the right things are done. All right, so I wanna say thank you to everybody again. Have a wonderful day, um, evening and a wonderful weekend. Take care.